All right, guys, we are live. Uh, for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I will be your friendly dungeon master this evening. And I can say that for certain, because, you see, tonight we are playing AD&D 2nd Edition, um, published by the defunct TSR uh, Game Studios, or I actually don't know, TSR Limited, wasn't it? LTD? Inc., I think. Inc., Okay. Um, and uh, this is uh, session two of our ongoing campaign playing the uh, Night Below uh, classic campaign written by uh, Carl Sargent. Right there. This is the uh, print-on-demand version from uh, Drive Through RPG. And with me tonight are the stars of the uh, Night Below campaign. I'll go the order that I've got you guys. we got two returning heroes and two uh, brand new heroes. So first up is John. Hey everyone, I am John, and <laughs> Dorman showed up. Look at that! <laughs> Look, he just showed up. <laughs> I am playing Dorman, the uh, the illusionist thief gnome, who's also a chef. Nice. And next up is Arlen. Hi, I'm Arlen. I'm playing Bear Gore, a dwarf fighter. Awesome. And next up, uh, joining us for the first time is the man, the myth, the legend, Jason Hobbs. Oh, I thought it was going to be George. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was going to be Jason. Well, hey, everyone. I am Jason. I am playing the elvish savage wizard, uh, Elanian uh, Elenden. Nice. And next up is the George Strayton. <laughs> hey, I'm George. I'm playing uh, a human invoker named Knox the Unexpected who likes to read the omens along the way. Uh, they... I, I do like that you've got like a T-shirt slogan as your name instead. <laughs> it does look like that. No, it says no, the unexpected. <laughs> you got a typo. Yeah. There <laughs> He's got a typo everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Oh, was your character's Here name no, the unexpected as well? No, it kept, it kept, it kept changing. Oh. Yeah, kept... <laughs> Auto correct. I literally did it five times. Oh my god. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's kind of a weird name, but whatever. Oh, yeah. Huh. That's there cool. you go. That's, cool. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and last up, joining us with his dramatic uh, last-second arrival is Steve-O. Absolutely. Uh, nothing less, of course. Uh, now I am playing the uh, incredible uh, half-elf bard, Hrilliho. Hrilliho, nice. Whose name is said differently every time. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So, guys, what? Um, since our last session, I had an opportunity to actually take a bit of a deep dive into my uh, Greyhawk stuff. Uh, I, you know, we sort of started this campaign without, um, you know, much planning. We just rolled up some characters and started playing the adventure. So um, in the effort of kind of, of catching up before we go forward, what I thought I'd do is, is talk about uh, kind of the, the setting that we're going to be playing in, how that uh, relates to your characters, talk a little bit about some of the, you know, um, some of the background material that we're going to be relying on for what you can draw on for, you know, character, uh, inspiration for how you're playing your characters, how you're going to incorporate your backstory, and um, and also talk about uh, where in kind of uh, what how I see, I guess, the setting of Greyhawk. So um, first off, let's talk, again, the other thing I should say is that on the Dungeon Musings Discord, I posted a whole bunch of concept art that I found online to kind of give a sense of the visual you know, vibe I'm going for, which you'll see is a definitely fantasy, but more of a dark fantasy. I know that's really shocking for you guys to be playing in a, a fantasy game of mine that goes more towards the dark extreme, but uh, that, that is what we're going to be playing, is a dark version of uh, Greyhawk. And I've just always seen Greyhawk that way because the uh, while I was old enough to have the World of Greyhawk box set out at the time when I started playing, uh, it was the From the Ashes box set that really made the setting familiar, uh, to, or that, where I became familiar with the setting from, I think, 93. Um, and the... Uh, it was Carl Sargent, same guy who wrote the uh, Night Below, the adventure that we're playing right now. He rewrote the setting, and uh, it made it a much darker and more dangerous place in the sense that evil seemed to be on the ascent everywhere. You know, shit was falling apart, evil kingdoms were coming together, an evil demigod was starting to conquer different lands, giants had conquered a, uh, you know, a formerly... Um, uh, free... Uh, uh, well, two, actually, formerly free uh, regions... Um, and uh, a um, group of uh, uh, ha humanoids, a humanoid army was on the march in the uh, in the Pomarge as well, too. So it was just a really 
dire kind of um, setting and like I don't have a I don't have a copy yet it's it's in the mail right now but the cover for it as well too has this amazing like castle burning in the background it's a um, Jeff Easley painting of what looks like undead guys riding forward you know uh, having just set forward or set fire to this castle and that's the kind of vibe that we're, we're going for in this is that uh, while you guys are safely in a region called the Yeomanry um, there's trouble you know um that's, that's happening kind of all around you guys as well. So the region that you're, the campaign takes place in is... Well, actually, before we get too specific, let's talk about the sensibilities of, of Greyhawk in general. If you read it in a core rulebook, or you read it in one of those complete handbooks, or you read it in something that doesn't have a specific setting, it's kind of assumed that's what Greyhawk is. Um, the While... You know, I think uh, Blackmore is arguably the first actual setting for D&D. Greyhawk is the first AD&D setting. And it's the assumption for a, what was AD&D. Um, they retroactively uh, placed most of the adventures that were published for AD&D into different places in Greyhawk. Uh, after, uh, uh, I can't remember if it was in uh, From the Ashes. I know From the Ashes has references to where you place all those things, but I don't know if it came out before that, but... In any event, um, if you read it in one of the non-setting specific books, it's about Greyhawk and it's applicable to Greyhawk. Um, what we're going to do is going to put a little bit more of a modern and a little bit more of a dark fantasy kind of vibe on that too. Um, I like the idea of it being a grittier kind of, you know, version. There are a wide variety of different uh, kingdoms that are, you know, and um, political entities that are around in uh, Greyhawk. Uh, and they don't necessarily all get along. <clears throat> like in your region where you guys are, you guys are in a place called the Yeomanry that split. It used to be part of this kingdom of Kjolland. And uh, Kjolland used to basically control many of those surrounding um, uh, countries or uh, political units. But over time, they either got independence like the Yeomanry did or they just never were never fully actually incorporated. They were client states more than they were an actual you know, set kingdom. Um, but it's sort of like the, you know, it's the thing you like having around because the Kingdom of Kjolland is re relatively lawful and, and stable and whatnot, but it kind of wants to take you over. So if you enjoy your freedom like the Yeomanry does, the Yeomanry is, I believe in Greyhawk, the only democracy as well, too. So, you know, if um, uh, they, the Yeomanry is known for, let's see here... Um, I'm going to give you the spiel that we got here. So early in the history of uh, the Yeomanry, the Flan Sewell, which are two different races, the Flan are kind of like um, dark hair, dark eyed Mediterranean kind of types, uh, bronze skinned. Um, the Sewell are kind of like uh, what you would think of like Laplanders, <laughs> really, really light skin, really light hair, uh, very pale, very thin. Um, the, it's a mixed race that settled there with a strong democratic tradition of uh, government. Uh, the warriors of all the tribes in the land elected spokesmen who themselves elected a single spokesman who would convene tribal meetings and negotiations. So in this, the city that or the towns you guys are visiting, these are people basically like wealthy landowners. You'll note that no one was introduced as a duke or a baron or an earl or any shit like that. It's because they're landowners. They're not necessarily uh, part of the gentry. Um, the democratic tradition persisted under a moderate, uh, moderately lengthy period of Kjellandish rule um, since those Kjellanders had the wisdom to listen to those they had conquered. K uh, Kingdom of Kjellan is obviously a monarchy. Um, uh, yeomanry warriors served in the uh, Kjellandish armies for decades, but at the height of Kjellan's expansion, the free men of, yeoman, uh, of the yeomanry uh, revolted and closed their doors to Kjellandish rule forever. Uh, this daring move was successful primarily because Keeland was uh, overextended dealing with other neighboring lands and a major internal revolt at the time. The result has been the creation of a state ruled by its warrior caste through their spokesman. So it's a strange hybrid of kind of like, um, not Athenian style, but kind of like, um, I'm trying to think what kind of democracy this would be. Uh, well, it's a, it's a classical republic, right? Like in the sense yeah. that Plato says it. Yep, that, totally. Yeah. Um, during the wars, so we, we are coming at the tail end of a series of conflicts called the Greyhawk Wars. Or the, the during the wars, the Yeomanry was willing to aid for Yondi uh, against Ayuz, and Ayuz is up here. He is a demigod of evil uh, that basically managed to free itself from its his uh, where he was uh, trapped, and then marched on all the kind of the you know free peoples and free lands. Um, 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 
unlike the unfortunates of Jeff and uh, Steric. So up here to the north, uh, there is Jeff and uh, Steric. I'm, and maybe it's Sterich, I don't know. i got to look it up. I think Steric is probably right. These regions were completely overrun by giants during these things. So they, um, depending on way, uh, where we go with this campaign, uh, oh, we may eventually get a chance to take out the Against the Giants, which is um, actually set in, uh, in uh, Jeff. It's about liberating that, uh, that whole uh, country from the giants, but we'll see. But that region has been basically overrun. Uh, in addition the, to the south, uh, beyond the Hul uh, marshes, there was this region of kind of pirates called the Hold the Sea Princes. And during the course of the wars, there were there was a massive political upset when they basically pissed off this kind of secretive group of Sewell mystics slash assassins uh, called the Scarlet Brotherhood. And it is common knowledge that the Scarlet Brotherhood has taken over the whole of the Sea Princes to the point where you guys, like the scuttlebutt of people traveling on the road is that you do not try. If someone's traveling with a red cloak on, you get very, very worried. Um, that kind of, you know, you apply a little bit of common sense to that. And if assassins, move, you know, travel around dressed in red all the time, they wouldn't be very good at their jobs. Um, but it doesn't prevent the, um, you know, the common folk and whatnot from fearing the... Uh, the extent of, or the reach of the uh, Scarlet Brotherhood uh, into the Yeomanry. Uh, nearly all common men and women of the Yeomanry own at least leather armor, a hand weapon, and a bow of some kind, and many own po pole arms as well. Landowners equip their peasants with such armor and weapons and train them in self-defense uh, militia as a matter of course. Uh, part of that is just because of the tradition, and part of it is also because the Jotuns, the mountains to the north there, and the Crystalmas Mountains are full of fucking giants. So it's partly also having just a, a tradition of that and also a way of preventing what happened to Jeff and uh, Steric happening to the yeomanry. Um, all those who bear arms, have borne arms, or serve as artisans or craftsmen are allowed to elect spokesmen. So you, uh, if you've been part, it's kind of, you know, a um, Starship Troopers type thing where if you've been part of the military, you get to vote. Um, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's see here. The uh, There is a minority of um, High Elves who live in here as well. And that will be... Actually, oh, Rilgo, you may have some uh, some interest in that. Uh, the Dwarves uh, live in the foothills of the Jotuns, the Little Hills. Um, and you, um, Dorman and uh, Elanian, you guys would come from the Dreadwood. Uh, the Dreadwood is where... Uh, Selvan elves, like there's different races of elves. High elves have incorporated themselves into the um, the sort of the general population of the yeomanry. They don't necessarily live with everyone, but they live sort of as part of the uh, part of the actual uh, country. <clears throat> the w Sylvan elves do not. Uh, they're not as Hobbs and I were talking about this beforehand. And in Greyhawk, there's a difference between wood elves or Sylvan elves and wild elves or Grugok elves. Grugok will murder people without question. Uh, they're the elves who live way deep in the forest. They never have any contact with civilization or whatnot. They'll kill you if you get into their territory. The Sylvan elves will at least try and figure out why you're in there. Uh, and they generally just don't like civilization, but it's not quite as extreme a reaction as what the wild elves or the Grugok do. Um, so that's where you guys would come from. Your uh, Rilgo, you are descended from uh, high elves. Uh, so your your mm. shared parentage with uh, Jeff's character uh, is a high elf. All right. So and the reason that makes a difference, the uh, Sylvan elves live a proper like nomadic, living off the earth, kind of going around, you know, uh, hunter gatherer kind of existence. The high elves are the ones who build, you know, things in trees and things like that in tree cities. The gray elves, because uh, Hobbs, you were asking about that too. Gray elves are even more. They're as kind of cut off from. Right, the rest of civilization as what the um, the Grugok are, but they're, to be honest, closer in sensibilities to what dwarves do. They like building with stone and things of you know um, things that have uh, more stability and permanency than like the tree houses of the high elves. Um, the dwarves, <clears throat> dwarves are your archetypical dwarves, and I think that the 
the thing that's easy to do with dwarves is to play them as stereotypes. I know I do a Scottish like a shitty Scottish accent for my dwarves all the time, but one of the things to think about them is you can draw inspiration from like sort of um, like Japanese and sort of Chinese and sort of Russian um, uh, I like ancestry ideas where like you're being you're borrowing your name you know it's the some of the honor traditions can be very seen as similar to what uh the what do you call it the um samurai have where you're you're borrowing your clan's name you're not uh you're not owning it um your ancestry when you introduce yourself especially to another dwarf it is often that you'll be re referencing an ancestor a favored ancestor and the one that you favor isn't necessarily the one that you know you um that is the most famous it could be but maybe it's someone that you identify with, right? Like maybe you're coming from a family of warriors, but you identify with some other kind of thing, blacksmithing or song or whatever. Um, <clears throat> dwarves love song, incidentally, as well. They are not, uh, you know, the kind of dour, whatever things that, that they are uh, sometimes presented as in non-Tolkien fiction. D&D uh, &D dwarves love song. So you can feel free to indulge your, um, your artistic license there uh, I don't. You don't need to necessarily break into song there, Arlen. But your penchant for writing poetry would not go uh, awry with um, with a dwarven character. Mm. Cool. So cool. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that you guys. Oh, uh, elven guys. Something interesting about this. So elves. Nox, you're human, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So. Uh, Nox, I think, I, I imagine you are kind of mixed, either uh, f mixed Flan Sewell or Flan. Yes, that... if you see my uh, picture, you'll see that that's probably... Definitely, yeah, yeah. So let's see here, where are you, Nox? Kind of got a bronze. Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. So guys, there's, that's what Nox looks like. Awesome. And then um, Elanian uh, looks like this, guys. Cool. And Elena, Jeff, uh, Jeff, um, uh, Jay is playing a pretty cool uh, specialist kind of wizard. He's playing an earth elementalist. So that's pretty neat. And he's a savage wizard, so he's got a pretty neat, uh, uh, some neat special abilities as well. Um, let's see here. What else we need to know? So the elves, um, Hobbs, you don't sleep. Um, what you instead do is you get lost in a kind of reverie. So you get lost in memory and kind of, you know, play over aspects of your life and whatnot. Your ability to, you're aware of your surroundings, but it's difficult pulling yourself out of that reverie just as much as it is waking up. Um, you also have, there's something from the Elven, uh, Complete Elven Handbook uh, that I like as well too, uh, where elves can, they don't give a restriction for this. I'm going to say once a day, but what you can do is because you are, part of this like the fabric of magic uh in um in the world uh you can basically like reveal your presence and when you do that you get a bonus to your reaction so this is in addition to your other kind of elven abilities i haven't put it on your character sheet yet just because I, I only read it last night but i thought that was pretty cool like it's a cool idea that like if you really reveal the majesty of of who you are it's a way of of you know d distinguishing yourself from the uh, uh some of the other races um, the, the thing I would say though, is that that can be used both ways. Like you can use that to, you know, be like a positive thing with characters that would be, or things that would be predisposed towards elves, or you can use it as a thing that's to like agitate things or to perhaps terrify things and force a morale check. Right. Uh, so you can feel free to wh whatever makes narrative sense of the, the way you play it up in the fiction. We will, you know, uh, it might, um, spawn a morale check at, uh, at an appropriate time. Um, it might help you with your reaction check, but if someone hates the elves, it may pr uh, prove difficult then. Um, Dorman, one thing that I, I forgot about gnomes as well, too, is that you guys can speak to animals. Yeah. So, yeah, so you can have a, a chat with, with animals. You can feel the, free... The, the burrowing kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and um, the other thing is, is you, the sort of irrepressible like a uh, jovial nature that we attribute to halflings that's very much true for gnomes as well too so the way you've been playing them that's totally how you've been playing them that's bang on that's totally it um the last thing i'll say too is for some of these kind of sort of racial traits too to make it clear for uh, like for me and for the folks listening at home as well too if you if you want to talk through what your thought process is for why you're doing stuff that's totally cool 
you know, because that helps us get inside your character's head and it helps it make it clear that this is what I'm drawing on for, for this aspect of how he's reacting or she's reacting or whatever. I think that might be a, a cool way to help us really not feel like it's just a bunch of characters who are humans with funny features. You know, um, because this game doesn't really, there's not specific, apart from your like stats and some of your, your improvision and some of your like finding, uh, you know, hidden doors and stuff like that. It's not, there's not anything mechanically that makes a huge difference between these characters. So this will be an opportunity for us to fill that in there. Now, where we are um, is we are just north of the tours here. We're around here. Uh, each of these hexes, as uh, George has helpfully uh, found before we started, is about 30 miles. So it's probably about two of these hexes is what's covered for uh, for the region in here. Two, maybe, two, maybe three. Um, where you came from um, is... Let's see here. I'm gonna, oh, I should have grabbed my... Dang it. Book of Adventure. I got It's got a random... Um, what do you call it? Uh, town names. Uh, in there hey folks in chat can you give me a cool um uh town name uh where we started the campaign oh, whoops okay i think i just read madison <laughs> town of madison <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> this the far off exotic land of wees conson <laughs> you know, you could pronounce it differently or something. Madison <laughs> or something. Yeah. Like we can't, my name, so my family name is actually Madsen, but that's not even a proper name. We're Danish. And the, <laughs> because, uh, you know, yeah, in a very, very minor racist way, they're like, oh, the way you name people is funny. Now your name's always this. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? Here, fine. It's, uh, we'll call it, um, Mads Glen. Mads Glen is uh, is where you guys originated. Okay, so, um, 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 so we can get ourselves um, up to speed here too. Let me move you guys over to Melbourne. I'll bring the guys up. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna assume that uh, Knox and Elaine that you were traveling with the guys. You know, uh, okay. for, for those listening at home, what we had talked about is how, because like this game is still, we're getting our feet from it. This is sort of like the, the pilot that might be reshot, you know, for the first little bit. It's us getting a sense of what the game is about. So we're making some edits to the, uh, to the fiction to start the game to kind of get a, a sense of where everything is and, and how everyone relates to each other. So we're going to assume that Elenian and Knox are already part of the party. Um, what I'll start with is why don't each of you guys tell the other party members uh, who your character is um, in, in a kind of a nutshell, you know, elevator pitch version. Uh, so, John, why don't we start with you? Okay. Um, well, I got a little description here. Dorman is a rather tall and rotund gnome. Um, he's, he's big and kind of burly for what you'd expect a gnome. Um, if you think of one of those strongman kind of guys in gnome form, that's kind of what he looks like. But uh, he, you guys probably met him as a chef in one of the, the taverns. Uh, he's, a, he's a master first chef. He knows how to make some food. Um, but what you may not know about him, um, unless you're really close to him, is that he is actually in a role uh, at, for like a thieves guild, uh, posing as a smuggler for some contraband. And he's also from a militant tribe of gnomes somewhere in the, in the, the deep wood. Mm -hmm. So he's, uh, he's kind of like your go-to sneaky guy. <clears throat> gnomes and Greyhawk are... Uh, n are notoriously, you know, um, uh, defenders of the free lands too. Mm -hmm. It's something that's specifically called out in the, in the uh, source material that yeah, it, like, so, they they are, you know, they'll march out with armies, um, yeah. just like dwarves, just like elves, and whatever else. So, so I'm, I'm watching the tall folk and making sure they stay in line. Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> Arlen, why don't you tell us about uh, Baragor? Uh, well, Baragor is a he's a dwarf. He's a dwarf fighter, kind of a classic, kind of heavily armed shield and a battle axe um, type fighter. And he's uh, got some crafting ability with blacksmithing. He's uh, pretty tough and, you know, he's got some ability to just endure hardship and, and work long hours and all that sort of stuff. And he's got a little bit of a gambling problem or is <laughs> he's good enough that it's not really a problem all the time but he's uh, not so good that it's never a problem. That is the reason why you were at the Silver Coin before, too. I think it's, it's a combination of the yeah. drinking and the gambling. That's why you've got very little recollection of having been to Melbourne before. 
Yep. <laughs> nice. Hobbs, why don't you tell us about um, Elanian? All right, so Elanian is a member of his tribe in the Dreadwood, which I'm not aware of what the name of the tribe is yet. We'll figure that out. He's a rather stern individual. Uh, he does carry a bow, so it's not evident, uh, you know, that he's a wizard necessarily, or if he must be some sort of a cross wizard. He does always have kind of an earthy loam smell about him. And uh, he does have a curiosity concerning uh, wizardry, uh, but he also uh, tends to reinterpret omens. Mm. And uh, he's definitely been doom and gloom recently with his fellows considering uh, the dangers that are inherent in the area and uh, the troubles that they're surely bound for. So here's another little tidbit for you to work with as well too, uh, is your, so, um, the way we're going to treat uh, elementalism uh, is, at least within your tribe, is this is um, basically your tribe, you know, dates back, you know, with the length of time that elves live. It's like time immemorial. But the secrets that you've learned from them, from, from your tribe, are really only shared amongst your tribe. And it's all earth elementalism as well, too. It's not like there's, you know, masters of fire, masters of air, and whatever else, too. Earth elementalism seems to be a uh, a specific set of magical secrets that have been with your tribe since before you ran, you know, before the rise of mankind drove your kind into the into the deep woods. So, um, it's, I mean, obviously that is well before your time, but just to give a context of how other people might react to your kind of magic, uh, and what your, you know, you, whatever you want to bake in with your backstory with that stuff, you are definitely part of kind of a, an unusual and rare breed of, uh, magic user. Okay. I had one question. You had talked about changing the gain 50 XP for maintaining spell casting secrecy. So I'm not supposed to keep it. A secret, no, no, right? that's, yeah, that's right. That's from, um, uh, dark sun because of, you know, Pre right. uh, yeah, preservers. No, no, it, it's using XP, using your spells. Uh, it's out of the uh, second edition. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, I, DMG. I yeah, yeah. So basically, yeah, if you use your spells to resolve a problem uh, or to, to deal with a challenge, uh, that will. Um, well, yeah, maybe. Are... Nice. There you go. All right. Cool. Thanks. Um, and next up is George. So why don't you tell us about Nox? Yeah, Nox, not no. Uh, the unexpected. Uh, he came from a long line of Flannish wizards, um, very academic style wizards, uh, and it was the last thing he ever wanted to do. But he was kind of forced into it, and it sort of came naturally to him. Uh, but he was sort of the, the the class clown and the and the you know screw up. Uh, but mostly because he did it on purpose to try to get them to let him leave. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, he's 18 now, randomly rolled, and uh, he's decided to just get the hell out of there and, and leave this place. So he left this like very uh, patrician, you know, very, very sophisticated type of school of wizardry to go off on his own. And he, so he's kind of rash and reckless, um, adventurous, okay. uh, and he likes to tempt and, and defy fate. So if there's something that people tell him he can't do, he's like, you know, devoted to trying to get it done. Okay, love it. Uh, and last, Steve-O, tell us about um, uh, Riligo. You betcha good old Riligo is a uh, traveling minstrel, a bard, who's uh, spent a little time around uh, uh, courtrooms, has uh, some, uh, you know, some some aristocratic roots, but who prefers the uh, the company of, uh, of strangers. So did overall. you say courts or courtrooms? Uh, cor courts. Okay. <laughs> Quite. What, royal courts. Yeah, no, court rooms? Court, courts that are rooms. Yeah, it's not, not courts. Yeah. Depends on how much uh, trouble you got in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what exactly. we've established so far is, uh, so Jeff's character, Jeff can't make it tonight because uh, he's no. uh, helping a buddy out, but um, he is, he's Calador, right? Correct. Calador's mm -hmm. brother, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, half brother, that is. Uh, he's full elf, I'm half elf. Oh, wait. And, uh, he, yeah. I don't know if he's changed his uh, illustration again, but he's it's gone now altogether. Let me just quickly slap mm -hmm. something in there. Because uh, we had one from before. Mm -hmm. Where was it? I recognize the picture from somewhere online. Oh yeah, I mean, like the all the images that I've been using for this have all been, you know, a Google search away. Uh, yeah. So there it is. Yep, that's yeah, one. There we go. Okay, so Calador is uh, yeah, he is a high elf who is a um, kind of like a, a wannabe hitman or or uh, mercenary, and Hurligo is uh, his half brother. Um, I think that Dorman, since Dorman and Elanian, um, like. It, it, 
I'm not sure the connection would necessarily be between Elanian and the other elves because you guys are from very different parts. Whereas Dorman and Elanian, you guys are from the same uh, region, right? So maybe you guys went to uh, Mads Glen together. And, you you know, Elanian, if you were not comfortable living in that town, you may have been out in the woods or forest or whatever the fuck. Whatever you think is uh, your character would have been doing. Um, I could have kept him apprised of what was going on because I go out and hunt quite often to get food. Yeah, and Elanian's yeah. pretty fucking good at that as well, too. Okay. And then we had... What about Nox? How do you think Nox fell in with the group? And any, anybody can give suggestions for how that... Yeah, I'm open to suggestions because he, he's a type that's, uh, you know, looking for trouble. So, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, maybe when you guys officially got the job, this courier job, he uh, overheard you talking at the bar. At the tavern, and uh, no, I, no, no, we, no, no. We want more of a connection. Like I, I don't want to have to do oh, the like, like a background yeah, connection. like you guys are. We're, gotcha. Everyone's got to have some kind of connection to each other. You guys are an adventuring group. We we know we don't need to uh, have a point where. What I don't want Amen. is a point where we're like, well, why would I carry on with these guys? You know, yeah. uh, I'd like there to be a, an actual link between everybody. Totally. Um, well, the other troublemaker, Calador, Ka does sound like a troublemaker uh, from how Jeff's been playing him. So. Well, we yeah, do that's have true. Three wizards in the party now, so you keep, you keep going like this when you refer to us troublemakers. Are you trying to apply something? <laughs> <laughs> well, not as human, and Hrago is half human, so yeah, you're already troublemakers. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else? I think what are his, that um, non-weapon proficiencies. So, well, one of them is actually this is a connection that's possible is omen reading. So I wonder if he somehow, uh, w uh, you know, when he first left the, you know, school of, that he was in, that he read the omens and it led him directly to Elanian. Yeah. And they both were led to the same point at the same time, and they sort of became kind of bosom buddies instantly because well, they thought they were brought together. Is what about that, Hobbs? He could be very interested in this uh, strange use of magic if it's unusual and unknown. Yeah. And, yeah, I was wondering that too. That that sounds great. So I think he's like intrigued by the savage wizardry. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And then maybe, yeah, like when you guys were um, hanging out at the, um, uh, oh, jeez, what's it called? Something Rest for Dogs? What, what we're, we're Sleeping Dogs Lay. We're Sleeping Dogs Lay, yeah. Was, that was the name of the tavern where Dorman worked as a cook. Maybe like when, when you guys were, you know, Dorman may have recognized you, Elanian, as, as part of that, you know, that rare elven tribe in, in the um, Dreadwood, or maybe you recognized him. You know, you heard him speak in an accented elven that was, uh, you know, similar to the Sylvan elven that you, that you grew up with, and that was so. You guys had knew knew each other, and then when you found out about this, what's what's happened thus far? I, or I'll let someone else. I've been yapping a lot. Uh, Arlen, why don't you tell the guys what they've been dragged into? So, Bergor, um, the dwarf, was approached by the town wizard, whose name is Gordrin. Yes, Gordrin. Um, to do some courier work, to basically take a whole box full of material components to another wizard whose name is Touster. Touster, Touster. that's right. Touster in Thurmaster, which is this little town in Heronshire. And uh, we're, we basically signed a contract that we're going to take all of this, this, this whole box full of weird shit um, to the wizard and uh, get it to him safely and without any tampering with, which was an important point because Dorman wanted to tamper with things. <laughs> Dorman was going to, and that's why he's carrying it. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we're, we're on track. We're at the village of Milborn right now, trying to get a barge or something to go along the Churnet River all the way over to Thurmaster so we can deliver the goods and get paid because we have a we have like a, a bill of mark or something that needs a signature to turn into cash. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then cool. when you arrived in Milbourne you uh, uh you did in, a, in addition to meeting a bunch of people you did find uh, that there was um well two interesting things happened to you guys after arriving in uh, uh Her excuse me Herenshire. Um what was the first one? Bandits attacked. Mm -hmm. And we slaughtered them wholesale. <laughs> but we uh, we met some farmers before then that were actually pretty nice. Um, and then we got to town and reported the bandits. 
met a guy with really bad breath and that pickled eels. And then, uh, <laughs> yep, that's Rastaford. And then we found out uh, um, Rastaford's uh, apprentice. Oh, no, not Rastaford's. Uh, Thor Thorastor? What? Thorastor? Yeah, his apprentice has gone no, missing. No, uh, Towster's apprentice. Towster's apprentice has gone missing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a girl from town who her... Uh, boyfriend is worried because she didn't leave a note or anything and just left and the parents are sort of like, it's okay. This, things are going to be okay. She she must be doing the normal thing and just didn't leave a note. And he was like, but she didn't take her material components with her and so there must be a problem. And uh, some of us were more interested than others. Oh, and we met the grumpy old dwarf too. Yeah. Yeah. Who Dorman eventually was able to ply with ale until he became friends with Baragor. Yeah, and you guys can assume that the uh, the handout that I sent you guys on um, uh, by email, and I think I posted it in the Discord. Uh, you you can see that those are sort of the there you go. Yeah, there's the NPC handouts. Yeah, with everyone on there too that you guys can feel free to put notes on and stuff. And then I also gave you a uh, handout of sort of like rumors that you learned. Uh, so mm -hmm. you guys can feel free to incorporate that into what your plans are. Um, although for now, your plan is is to get uh, get yourself a barge and head up river. So, um, do you have any, before we jump into our game here, uh, do you have any questions about um, what's happened before or what your characters would have done before? I'm trying to think if there's anything else that... Oh, you also met a, uh, a ranger, actually. Uh, a guy yeah. named Geralt. He's, uh, he's lame uh, now, but... Uh, he seemed to be um, the, the kind of town sheriff. Mm -hmm. And he also uh, seemed to be in contact with other rangers as well, too. He was, uh, he uh, had was a silver lady. Yeah, something they says, what, a bird lady or something? Yeah. So that's where we find ourselves, guys. Um, with that in mind, uh, why don't we have... Uh, we'll start with the, uh, the next morning. And I think, who do we think is going to be the first up then? Uh, it probably not. Well, Bergor, I mean, do you want to give me a, a poison save? Uh, let's see how how well you you manage the uh, keeping pace with old Grizzler. Okay. You got a huge uh, bonus against poison. poison. Yeah. Poison. Okay, so let me add the modifier because I get a modifier for being a dwarf. Versus you do poison. pretty, and because your constitution is so good, you get a huge bonus. So this is including the poison plus five. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. So in spite of the... Oh. Is that a whisper roll? Yeah. Nice. Yep. So I can see it, but I don't think anybody else... Oh yeah, 2GM. Oh, okay, shoot. So uh, it's only you and me who can see it. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So the, uh, the interesting thing is that... Uh, you're you're actually feeling it, you know. Like you you clearly you know made a big dent in the Baron's, um, the supplies uh, or the the um, the whatever it's called the stocks or stockpile. Uh, where you guys are currently is right here. This tavern here is a place called the Baron of Mutton, and it is run by a pair of twins uh, who are named um, Andrin and uh, Bartholu, and uh, they they. Don't carry threshers around, guys. But the the look of like young, handsome guys uh, in kind of commoners' clothes, uh, they run it. But what you actually learn is that uh, it's actually their uh, their. Where is he here? Um, because he finally makes an appearance uh, later on. It's actually their grandfather, uh, a crotchety, near blind old guy named Deercaster. Looks like this. He actually owns the place. He owns the Baron. Uh, his uh, son uh, unfortunately died. His daughter-in-law died. Uh, but the, the boys still run the place for him. So you may have found some of the information from him. Although he does seem... Uh, he is a the ripe um, you know, young age of 90 years old. And he's human. And he's human. Yeah, so he, um, he is... Uh, has moments of lucidity, but otherwise kind of drifts off. Um, so then probably not Baragor. What I was getting back to what I was asking is who would be the first one to get up in the morning? Who do we, who do we think is the first down in the well, morning? Dorman is used to getting up early to make breakfast. So yeah, I think we'll so. probably find him in the kitchen. Sure. Arguing Elaine. with what's their face saying, no, I'll cook. Yeah. <laughs> Elanian is probably lurking in the woods outside. Sure. Meditating. 
Yeah, and there's small copses of wood. Uh, like, it doesn't carry on. There's the whole uh, region here, uh, I mean, at least immediately around Melbourne, is all f uh, farmland. And for the first, like, maybe 30 miles or, or so that you've been traveling in since you passed, if you want to see a, a map of Herringshire, uh when, you, you know, without going to that thing, it's on the, um, in one of the handouts. Yeah. You can see as far, like, basically, as soon as you get past the Lurchwood, uh, in the west, you start hitting farmland, and it just carries on all the way up to uh, Millbourne, and apparently all the way down the river as well. Uh, so yeah, so that's definitely the case. Um, would you have breakfast on your own? Elves are uh, mostly vegetarians, and you don't require nearly as much food as what uh, um, men do. So you could be, you know, survive. That could be your breakfast, and you could just meet up with everyone heading in, or you could go and join them for a proper repast in the uh, in the Baron. How do you think Elanian feels about Dorman's cooking? Is it to his taste, or is it... He is an excellent cook, but... Uh, it's it's decent as far as gnomish and managed food goes, for sure. Uh, it wouldn't be anything that... Uh... Very good this morning. Oh, <laughs> is it? <Yeah. laughs> I'm sure he's, fat, he's uh, broke his fast on some... Uh, way bread or something but it's certainly joining uh, the men in the morning isn't bad sure so then um i think next will either be uh, well let's start with this so dorman you're you're sort of you got up early and you you know when you come in you see that one of the two uh boys um the uh, arden or uh or sorry andrin or uh, bartholu are are working in there you can't tell them apart necessarily um well, like he's you know angry at the world and the other one's just this, wishing that time would go by faster this one looks sad you know he definitely looks like he looks very tired he's got big bags under his eyes and he looks sad um, that's, that's the one whose girlfriend's missing okay so that's Andrin so uh, he is not you're so stealthy that you, he's not aware of your presence unless you want to make him aware of it Bruh. okay he hits it and drops some stuff and he looks <sighs> Breakfast isn't ready yet. Well, yes, I've come to help. Uh, give me, uh, cause you're what's your charisma again? Your charisma bonus. Thirteen. I've got a plus one reputa reaction. Okay, so give me a two d six uh, minus one. Let's see how this guy goes over. You did play a prank on him, so I'm not sure you helped his uh, initial <laughs> starting reaction. So you know he um, he looks for a moment like he might get mad, and then kind of you know your little smiling face. He kind of your help would be appreciated. Thanks. Um, pull that stool over if you want some uh, some extra height. Uh, so you start chatting, and what you I think over the course of your you know you're helping him out. He's chatting a little bit. Uh, you strike me as a chatty Kathy type character anyway. So okay. he starts talking a little bit about uh, uh, Jeleneth, the um, his his like you know kind of fiance, the the girl who went missing. Um, and again, he shows you that picture that little uh painted and it's a fairly i mean you've never met the girl but it looks like a person it's not one of these things where it's just like shitty you know the the local artist is the one who just draws better than everyone else but can't draw for shit it's a nice depiction of a fairly calmly uh human woman um young uh dark hair a blue cloak with silver clasps at the neck and what he tells you is that he actually gave her a uh, a gift a signet ring it was a signet ring with a J engraved on the inside of the band. Uh, he did not tell uh, the parents. You, t you took from what the, the um, what um, Hald uh, Haldalar and Perella said last night. You took from what they said that they expect that they're going to be engaged. But it sounds like they actually were engaged and, and he just didn't has not told her parents yet. Gotcha. Yeah, um, so he... Go ahead. Norman will uh, uh, pat him on the shoulder and says... Uh, I, I feel for you, boy. Um, we're, we're heading to uh, Thurmaster here shortly, and we'll let her uh, master know and uh, do what we can to send people your way. But I did give your brother and uh, her parents, her parents, right? Yep. Uh, a tip uh, to, to use the hounds to try and sniff her out. I'm sure they, they could be very useful here. I will. We tried last night. Um... Trail too cold. All right, sorry, I hit the wrong button. One sec here, guys. <laughs> he just got rid of himself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I hit the uh, went to the D and D homepage instead of the actual 
the pin thing I wanted to go to. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, okay, yeah. what I was saying is, um, Geralt. Has, he yeah, and Geralt uh, went looking last night, along with uh, uh, Rendemis and Dagmar. So, like, basically, most of the uh, of the people in um, like the the two guys who are on watch, uh, they took their they took some of um, uh, Naster's uh, hounds, and they tried to make a search for her, but uh, nothing. Well, how long has she been missing? She only met, went missing. She was uh, the what is it two days ago as of now? Because uh, it was like when you guys came in, that was the she they the, that morning she was gone when you guys arrived yesterday. Okay, well, Steel says that. Well, I'm sure her master will have means of locating her with a spell of, of some sort. Um, he is no. Um, good. Do you have a locket of her hair? Of her hair? We could find uh, somebody who knows omens and sees things to find her. On there may be one on her uh, on her pillow, uh, but. Uh, yeah, uh, Lenin, why don't we assume that you've been uh, kind of doing that? Give us a. Um, uh, a tracking uh, roll, please. Alrighty. Let's, let's see, see what's I'm... going on. Did I mute myself? No, I didn't. Ah, let's see if I put these incorrectly. Okay. Oh, too high. Too high. So, it unfortunately, it wasn't. Now, uh, I'll remind you guys, too, uh, if you do want to try again. Uh, you, we currently have five fortune points. Um, can I ask one of you guys to keep track, like a running tally of that, and just maybe put it in chat when we use them up? Gotcha. Yeah, I'm keeping okay. track of them. So uh, we have, uh, it, you can make use of that if you want, um, or you can just say that like the other, you know, people who were searching, uh, you didn't get a chance, like you weren't able to find anything. I wouldn't mind using mine because um, Elanian is uh, trying to ingratiate himself into these people. He's super stern, but also uh, uh, good at heart. Yeah, for sure. So the yeah, take, uh, and it's a shared pool. So you, you guys can all uh, draw from it. So uh, Elanian, go ahead and give us another roll. Yay. That's a critical success. <laughs> <laughs> nice! Founder. And that one! Hell yeah! Founder. <laughs> so what you find uh, are some... Um, there are some tracks uh, at the... There's one point in the... Um, uh, kind of uh, some, some of the fields to the north where you, with the, the help of some of these... The, the town seems to breed. You, you actually meet uh, someone that uh, the others have not... And that is this is Nastor, and Nastor is the guy who runs the uh, stables and the kennel, uh, and he breeds these huge dogs. And give me a sec here; I'll, I'll show you an illustration of them. Um, wait, is it Nafter? I'm seeing Nastor. I think it's Nafter. Let me see. Let me see. Nafton. I'm not even getting any of these right. Good lord. There we go, guys. Okay, so this is Nafton. And then the the ranger who actually you're... Uh, for, for a human, I think you're quite, um, uh, you know, maybe surprised or at least, uh, you know, impressed by his um, woodsmanship. That's this this old guy here, too. He walks with a very distinct limp on his, on his right side. Uh, but uh, he's out looking for you guys as well, too. And... Uh, the... Where is it here? Do, 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 do. And... Handout. Um, this... They do not have saddles on them like this uh, illustration does. But this is what the dogs look like. There we go. Boom. There we go, guys. These big mastiffs. No, that's a riding dog worthy of Dorman. Oh, yeah. So these suckers, um, they, they were brought out there too. And I think maybe because of your, you know, your kinship with animals too, uh, Alanian, uh, you you were, you know, uh, working with one of these things. You Your people know how to work with uh, with pack animals, you know, ones that, that are at least friendly to you. And you're able to point out one one bit where there is a little bit of, of uh, depression and there's maybe a, um, a small scrap of um of blue fiber and there's a, her scent seems to be there there's nothing else around like whoever uh whoever whatever may have you know have passed through here there's not obvious signs of any other tracks that are direct like 
she's not being dragged or whatever else. The extent of it is the scent and that single kind of blue fiber or a little bit of, of blue uh, stuff. So whether, you know, um, with a nat one, I'll also tell you that there's there while there are marks there, they are too big to be a five foot two, you know, uh, young woman's mark uh, tracks. Oh, you're, you're muted, Hobbs. So I do think I can follow the tracks, or all I found was this evidence? All you found was that evidence. That, so there's the scent of her, there's the, the blue kind of fiber, and there's tracks from someone else that's bigger than her. And then there's, they're kind of gone. Mm. Uh, this is on the north side of town, though. For whatever uh, value that is. I, and what that probably does, you are likely uh, ingratiating yourself to the, the people here, at least. We could say that the reason he he finally came back and, um, you know, was able to, to be here in time for the, uh, to open the, 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 the kind of the Baron up and get the breakfast started is because he was told, like, look, sh yes, we believe you. She's missing. But there's nothing we can do right now. We, we've, we've tried, there's no tracks, and we can't just wander around, you know, to the north and try and uh, hope we stumble across her. Mm -hmm. So, um, next one down then, so maybe Aline, you're actually in the, uh, you know, you had your, your sleep in the, in, the, uh, in the woods outside, and then you've come in in the morning because you knew that he would be here as well too, in addition to the rest of the, the group. Who do we think is next up, guys? All I know is I'm last. I think Bergor is last. If he... <laughs> I think it was a competition for last. Uh, I'd like yeah. to be in that competition. <laughs> so maybe when one of you is... I think, here, let me say this, guys. We'll just... Uh, Baragor is kind of getting things ready, and there's a bit of a... And it takes a lot for a dwarf to stumble, because you're very stocky, start, you know, sturdy kind of guys. So there's a little bit of clanging and banging as you're getting your, your armor ready to, to put on. Um, you probably... and it, I mean, it's it's a brigandine that you wear, so it's, it's metal plates on a... Uh, a cloth shirt with, or leather jerkin or whatever with some cloth on top. So maybe you actually dropped it. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what wakes Nox and Rilligo. Oh, that's what I was thinking of too. This is, when I was making my uh, dinner uh, tonight too, guys, I was thinking of our campaign because one thing I forgot to tell you is where you were sleeping. Um, and I'm assuming because you guys are um, broke, 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 that you're sleeping in the, in the uh, common room, not in a, a separate room of your own. There are separate rooms of your own, and I don't want to tell you how to spend your money, so if you choose to spend this, you can go ahead. There is a common room um, with... Uh, it's a 12-bed common room uh, where you're probably sharing with barge workers and sometimes with uh, like the laborers and whatnot from the merchants. Uh, that is... Um, a bunk is three silver pieces per night. Uh, if you want uh, one of the five two-person rooms, it costs five silver pieces per person per night. Or you can get your own room for nine silver pieces per night. So do you think you guys would have common. gone common room or two-person room or a room for yourself? Common for me. Common. Mostly humans, right? Yep. Who snores? I'm getting my own room. <laughs> okay, so deduct from your uh, gold whatever you would have spent for your, for your um, uh, accommodations. Uh, but I, it sounds like everyone's wo now been woken up and you're all sort of staggering down. Uh, we'll say that you're finishing up uh, your breakfast as well, Baragor, and uh, or not Baragor, Dorman. Uh, when all the rest of you guys uh, join the uh, the scene, uh, Calador is here as well too, but he's very very quiet. As is mm -hmm. um, Ke Chael. Is that what? Uh... Yeah, Chael. Um, that is the Will's character, who is a specialist priest of Corallon Larathian. The elven awesome. god of war and kind of like the father god. Or, well, father, mother, because he's androgynous. But anyway, what? Um, so what happens next, guys? You guys have all collected for, for breakfast. You're able to talk about this. Baragor asked last night about hiring on with a barge, and there is definitely a, a barge that you'll be able to hire on with. Uh, you've, you've got some... A uh, guy whose name is, uh, let's see here. There we go. Oh, someone gave a... Uh, his name is Lorcanus. Sorry, I got... Uh, Cedric gave us a, a name for the uh, the town. We'll use that for the name of this guy instead, uh, Ced. So, uh, Lorcanus is the name of the 
uh, owner of the barge, and he'll he'll take you down. Uh, it'll cost you, I think. Uh, well, if you're going to provide protection, I think he'll just call it an even split. Okay. Can I have a question? Yeah. Of course. In this setting, how well known are dwarves to be seafaring folk? Uh, they are generally not. Uh, they are known for the mountains and whatever else. There's not really... There, there is... One of the things that, that is true of um, Greyhawk is that there are exceptions to every rule. Right? Like, PCs are always going to be the ones that cut against the cord and whatnot. So there may be... Um, Dwarven pirates, or you know, uh, dwarves who fell in with the sea princes, uh, but it's, they're not. You know, there's not famous dwarven navies sailing around. You know, the uh, the wild coast or something like that. So knowing uh, Baragor um, and his uh, drinking last night, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna prep his side of the table with a with a ale and some poached eggs and tell him not to eat too much because it's gonna be a bumpy ride. <laughs> nice. How do you take that, Baragor? Uh, it's not bumpy, you little gnome. It's a river, and it flows. Look out the window. You ever been on a river? Just... <laughs> I have been on rivers. I've even been on this river. You ever been on this river, gnome? I walked through it the other day. Ah. Uh, Baragor will be all right. Just you okay. wait and see. Okay. Copper on him throwing up in the first hour. <laughs> Anybody else? No? All right. So, the rest of you guys, anything else happen in um, uh, in the early morning? I think that um, uh, Lorcanus is getting ready as well. Let me put his name down here so I don't forget. So he, uh, he's, you know, he probably uh, comes down... Or you, when you come down, uh, Baragor and the rest of the guys, you see that Lorcanus is off in the corner. Uh, Lorcanus is probably a... Um, he's a middle-aged, slightly short guy. So it's, it looks quite strong. He's that strong, kind of outer shape, middle-aged type. Uh, where he, um, you know, kind of uh, waves at you as you come down and uh, says, um, you know, kind of gestures like an hour, one hour, and then we'll head out. No. Oh. So... Cool. Gives Dorman time to look at his spell book. Okay. Um... What about Nox? What, what does Nox do when he uh, comes down? Nox, well, the first thing that he does upon waking up uh, is cast armor on himself because uh, he knows he's going to get himself into trouble probably immediately. Okay. So, what's, that, what's that look like? So um, he uh, he does it, you know, he's as least flashy as you could possibly be. Okay. So he's sort of like, you know, just as quickly as he can, um, almost a little recklessly, uh, cast a spell. I don't know what this material components are. Here it is. A uh, piece of finely cured leather. Um, so he uh, he kind of whips out this leather, throws it up in the air, um, and as he catches it, suddenly this uh, like kind of invisible power pulse yep. like envelops him. Okay, so let's talk about the, the expectations for magic. Um, just like yeah. in Ash, um, if you've got a verbal somatic uh, material thing, unless there's a, something that's clearly invisible, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, invisible effects. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's if you think of the World of Warcraft film or the the Warcraft film, that big flashy kind of because magic is so powerful uh, in this. That's sort yeah. of how I'm picturing that it's you know you know it's yeah. happening when it's happening. Totally, he's not trying okay. to be um, secretive. Yeah. He's just like I don't care about this. Like, yeah, okay. He's, <laughs> he's, he's so slacker. easy. He's just like <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a total slacker. He's like. <laughs> And, but he also he's really good at it, so it's like the worst combination. I love it, because we're playing in a setting uh, published in the 90s with a proper 90s attitude. That's right, exactly. I don't care about your magic, old man. <laughs> yeah. And then... <laughs> 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 <That's fair. laughs> Winces okay. at the noise. <laughs> All right. Sorry, sorry about that. Assign my All companions right. to one of the hells, each of them. <laughs> they behave like this. <laughs> oh, what happened? Oh. So... You guys um, head down. Now, what about uh, Rilgo? What does Rilgo uh, do when he joins his uh, companions? He, he offers to buy them a morning beverage, you know? So, so just like the old uh, Germans in Bavaria would have, you know, four shots of schnapps before they went to the construction site, you know? Nice. Um, <laughs> famous, you know, German safety technique. Exactly. Okay. Well, so, that way you don't feel it when you mess up. That's yeah, right. exactly. It's not that you're not scared. It's that you don't care that you're not scared. Um, so, um, you guys, uh, you have your breakfast. Does anything else happen before you guys, uh, will hit the, uh, hit the river? Can't 
think uh, about it. Quick, 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 really quick question is those rumors that you sent us, those are things we already have those rumors. We yes. have found that so far already. Okay. When you guys were sitting around the uh, the tavern last night, uh, it's either stuff you heard from them or you heard from the farmers that you guys, not that the bandits disguised as farmers, but you spent one evening uh, sitting around with farmers from Herringer who were heading uh, to the west. Uh, they told you a little bit about stuff. And then uh, if not, then then you guys can fill in like who you've, you know, who you think you would have heard that those rumors from. It could be right. also from uh, um, uh, Lord Canis as well, too. He may have told, you know, told you something. He's not from here, but he does traffic up and down the, the river going to uh, Thurmaster and then back down uh, towards, you know, the rest of the yeomanry. Okay, cool. Okay. Right, so the barge, because I actually was having a hard time um, picturing what this looked like in, in my head. Uh, and you guys will be going up and down this river quite a bit, I think. Guys, here's a pretty good picture. It's a video game picture, so for, forgive me for using digital assets here. But I think it's a good idea of what the boat kind of looks like. Cool. I thought it would be bigger. Uh, no, it's this is a, um, a river thing, so it's... Uh, this is not a proper like masted ship of any well, kind. Well, kind of like kind of like uh, Bard's barge in the Hobbit movies, right? He's got a river barge totally. in there. Yeah, that's pretty similar. Yeah, some barrels stacked on basically just barrels on a floating yeah piece yeah. of because you're not going ship. to war, you're not whatever else. Yeah. This is the uh, um, you the I think Steve may be the only one who will get this, but there's if you do a Google search for something called the Log Driver's Waltz, uh, it's something that any Canadian. Um, me and Steve's age up about 10 years and down about 10 years. If you've, by thinking of it right now, I've got the fucking song caught in my head, but it's about like the, it's got pictures of guys um, who were log drivers moving um, logs down and you see him walking CBC across. Special. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is totally, on, on the break, you should definitely check out the log driver's waltz because it's totally worth it. Um, anyway, the let's see here. So, uh, unless there's anything else, guys, you will uh, go and meet up with uh, Lord Canis. You'll get the, um, you know, I'll hop on the barge, and you guys will start heading down river. Okay, so guys, we've got uh, Dorman as your kind of uh, party token here, and what I can do is get rid of the bar. Hold on here. None. Although, we used to use... Um, Jason's token for the party token, and we all know how things ended for him. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> oh yeah, Hobbs, I don't think you knew, but uh, Arlen had the honor of being the first fatality in our uh, Ash game. I definitely and it was heard. like a week later that I died in the other Ash game, too. <laughs> no, <laughs> in fairness, everyone died in that one. <laughs> Except for yeah. John's character. Well, I, I almost died. Just... Okay. So guys, you start heading down uh, down river. Now, uh, we it will take you uh, three days to make all the way down river because you're you're sailing against the um, against the current. Um, but I got uh, an idea of sort of what you're passing because there's farms on uh, both sides of the river uh, as well. So I wanted to give you. Here we go. Dorman's gonna be grumpy. Dorman's gonna be grumpy. This is too small of a place to spend three days in. We are What's small, in that? Right. What's in the box underneath the like the guy who's barging in the back of that barge or the boat? Uh, that is probably the uh, cabin. Okay, there if is there, a cabin. If, yeah. If there's inclement weather or something like that. That's probably where they're going. Okay. Okay. Here we go, guys. Here's an idea of what your passage is like. And yes, this is an Almany stock photo that I'm. <laughs> You see, so <laughs> good to be I'm looking forward to that copyright strike. <laughs> uh, but that gives you just to give you a sense of sort of what you're, you know, what you be passing. These uh, these farms go uh, pretty much right up uh, to the river, and in terms of the uh, what the actual uh, farms look like too, I found a pretty good uh, illustration of what kind of these um, medieval farms would be like. That are not like, you know, woodcuts. There <laughs> we go, guys. Because these things have had uh, generations for them to, to build the actual farmhouses and the outlying structures and stuff like that. So these things have been, you know, uh, around for, 
geez, like probably two centuries, maybe longer. Um, so, like, as far as, you know, um, Bergor uh, tracks things, this is not a particularly old, you know, um, uh, a very old, you know, uh, region. But uh, for Nox, I mean, this, it does look like these are very well-lived in uh, communities. So, um, as you make your way down the river as well, too, you do pass a bunch of small little tributaries and streams and so forth that, uh, that go off. But the one that really... Uh, stands out to you and as you're going along as well too you guys are um night you know taking your your evening on the river yeah y'all kind of help drag part of the uh, the barge up uh you all uh, moor it there and then you you don't stay on the barge overnight you don't sail through the night because that's just crazy you um you overnight on the on the bank so fortunately i mean as you're making your way along and there's you know not uh um, not a, an afternoon or a couple of hours go by without, you know, you passing by and seeing some farmhands working in the fields. It's, it's early in the season, so they're getting right, you know, uh, they're out there planting. And, uh, the hog brook is the first thing. After about, let me see here, after your, I guess, partway through your second day is when you pass the, uh, the thornwood down to your, um, to the south. And the thornwood, uh, grows... Uh, especially near where, where Hogbrook is here, where you can see the, um, the Hogbrook uh, flows to the south, or from the south. The Thornwood is a much wilder uh, forest than what the Lurchwood was. Uh, the Lurchwood was uh, kind of, it was primordial, and it was fairly, you know, uh, fairly untouched by uh, human hands. But the Thorn, uh, Thornwood definitely has a more wild and aggressively growing kind of feel to it. Has has more vibrancy, maybe. Um, perhaps more danger. Um, but fortunately, I mean, you do not run into any issues there. Uh, you carry on, um, and as you continue on down the Turnit River, uh, you go into the Redwood, and the Redwood is, in contrast to the other two ones, this is a place full of um, natural beauty as well, too, but very serene. Uh, you can tell that it's incredibly, there's not even a single hint at any uh, logging or any, you know, uh, people um, chopping down trees or any, in, even any evidence of that. But that's consistent with what you've heard, uh, which is that um, Lord Palfrey uh, prohibits anyone from cutting down any trees in the, in the Redwood. It's, it's intended to be kind of a common place for collecting. You maybe pass uh, a family uh, that's, uh, you know, a, a mother and some kids who are collecting, say, like, you know, nuts or berries and nuts or something like that uh, on the, um, you know, on the side, having a snack during the day. They pass by, the kids kind of wave at you guys, you know, and I'll leave it to you to who waves back. And definitely then it's, doorman. Definitely doorman, yeah. I, would, I do too. And you hear the, um, one of the kids kind of shouts out at you, You're as big as me! I bet it way more. <laughs> no doubt. All right, and then it's um, about partway through the third day when you guys finally... And you pass uh, barge traffic uh, heading the opposite direction as well, too. You do the kind of, like, you know, Jeep drivers or, like, motorcycle drivers passing each other. You know, the kind of, like, wave as you're going by. Um, you do notice that those of you who... I think, Bergor, you're in particular the one that notices this, that uh, they they have uh, armed escort as well. You didn't run into any trouble along the uh, the river, but... Each of the bards, bar, bards, each of the barges you pass has hired, um, you know, armed guards uh, on board as well as uh, laborers and whatnot. And that's when you guys finally arrive in uh, Thurmaster. So let me uh, first out give you a little map here that you can uh, open up yourselves, and then we'll go over to the big map and we'll talk about what you see there. So where is it here? Here we go, Thurmaster. So here we go, guys. This is the village of Thurmaster. Much I less... It would be bigger. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you say as you go up. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about Thurmaster. So as you guys come going in, yeah, it, it is... Uh, you definitely did think it would be uh, bigger. And um, it looks like it actually may have been at one point. Uh, because you can see on the outskirts of the uh, the palisade, that kind of slapped together uh, wooden palisade, there are the ruins of a bunch of other buildings. 
Uh, the, this uh, village, it looks like it may have been as much as twice the size at some point, but has been subject to some kind of something unpleasant uh, at the very least. What's going on with my camera here? Come on, camera. Boom. Focus. What are you doing? Focus. Go back. Woo! Here we go. Nope. There we there are. There we go. <laughs> yeah. like willing it into focus. Uh, okay, so what... Um, Let's see here. Howlers. Yeah, I was just checking the handout to see if there was any rumors about what uh, what's happened at Thermaster, but no, I didn't see anything. Okay, so that's the first impression you get, and then um, when you head up to the uh, uh, you, the docks, I suppose you see there are two. Uh, well, I guess the first thing you see is uh, that there are gates um, at the side. But who, let's see here, I think no one has any kind of like engineering or architecture proficiencies. No. Nope. I don't think so, okay. No. So, you Not know. Not unexpected? Do you unexpectedly have one of those skills? Un I, I, unexpectedly, I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> so, the what you can tell from the uh, the Palisades as well, too, those, these walls uh, look like they would. You know, they they would definitely um, keep out easily bored uh, and easily distracted aggressors, but not much more than that. Uh, any one of you uh, setting it like uh, Dorman obviously is quite good at scampering up places he's not supposed to get to. Uh, I think really go. Do you have climb walls as one of your skills as well? I can't remember what the bards get. Do you remember, Steve? Oh, sorry. Uh, no, I don't have. A, I think it was maybe an option, but I don't believe I have that. Um, yeah. I've got pick pickpockets is mainly my main thing. Uh. <laughs> oh, you do have climb walls at fifty percent. Fifty. Oh, uh, well, look at that. So I do. <laughs> yes, I. Okay, so you two uh, would easily be able to, you know, stammer. But even the rest of you guys, you know, like it would just take a little bit of effort to get up this thing. It it would not keep anybody out. Um, but as you, um, you know, as the, the guard is, as the, uh, the boat kind of goes down, you can see that someone, one of the, the, the two guardsmen seem to talk to each other. Dorman, you actually have read lips, right? I think a couple of you guys do. I do. Anyone who's got read lips, go ahead and give me a check. I have read lips. I thought you guys did, yeah. Okay. Nice. I'm, I'm, I've been so bored that I'm eager for conversation oh, from other yeah. people. We nice. Do? So, real go. I think just because of the distance, you don't quite. Uh, you can't make out their faces. Uh, mm. But Dorman, you definitely are able. So, what seems to be going on between the two, you know, guards at the front gate is there's a disagreement of who has to walk over to the dock to intercept the boat. Like you uh, go, no, you go. I went to the last one. No, you're forgetting. There was that guy who was coming in from the south before I went to that one, and then someone else is like, no, 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 you. Uh, and so this goes back and forth. Like, look, they're getting in already. So finally, one of them leaves, and then um, we had Will for a second there. We did have yeah. Will for a second yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let's hopefully he comes back. Um, so then the one of them finally leaves, so that by the time the barge comes drifting up to the the docks, the um, this one guard is waiting there, and he looks kind of put out for having gone down here. Uh, I think that some of you guys have likely, over the course of your uh, sometimes long, sometimes short lives, depending on your character, you've come across people who are pinnacles of soldiering. Men who were born to carry weapons. You know, they seemingly were born with a sword in their hands. That's not this guy. <laughs> this guy... Uh, looks like he, you know, borrowed someone's helm that doesn't quite fit. He doesn't quite know how to carry a spear properly. And he's got armor that is just not clasped on properly. So he walks up to the, the, the dock and he says, um, What's your business in Thurmaster? And uh, Lorcanus steps forward and he says, Supplies. Uh, supplies for Baranus, a store. And he just kind of shrugs like, All right, take Pier 2. Uh, and then he walks away. He does not seem to be terribly uh, interested in inspecting anything, and, and that's that. So Lorcanus uh, pulls up, and he says, Well, here we are. If um, oh, This is Thurmaster. If uh, you're looking forward, and he gestures over to the south end of town to where that tower is, 
He says, I think what you're looking for is Towster's Tower. You can find him over there. Where did they always have a tower? Mm hmm. This is Greyhawk. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Wizards always have uh, a tower. Nox is like, hey, uh, you know, what happened here? It looks like uh, it had some trouble or something. This. You know anything oh. about that? Yeah. It's like some buildings got uh, crushed. Yeah, this is. Oh, gosh. Uh, I This is. It's before my time. But what I, I heard is about four decades back, uh, they had some problems in the uh, Shrieken Mire to the south there with uh, those reptile men. Yeah. Uh, they came out and from what we heard is that uh, they killed or carried off more than half the town. Um, and that's what he kind of gestures to the, um, uh, to the Palisades. Um, but that's before uh, Count Parfrey, uh, his, uh, not the current Count, mind you, but his, uh, his father hired a band of uh, mercenaries to head into the mire and kill them all. Burn their villages, massacre their leader. I, I've, I've never seen a, a reptile man uh, since uh, in the time that I've been going here, and I've been going here 20 years. So whatever they, they did, they certainly got it done, but any gestures to the broken and abandoned homes. Seems like they may have uh, come a little late. Yeah, it seems so. That's lucky for those lizard men, because uh, they got out of my... Uh, I see my uh, spells and magic. Uh, so I'm sure whatever they suffered was uh, a lot less, uh, less horrible than what would happen if I had been out there, so... Good for them. Roman's, Roman's rolling his eyes behind them. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, yeah, Lorcanus kind of makes it makes eye contact with uh, Dorman, and there's a little bit of a. Yeah, that's. I, I think that's appropriate. Yeah. Uh, well, you're, you're so 18 young too, right? Yeah, eighteen. Exactly. Old. Eighteen. I'm like, I just my first year of school at college, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> first year of college. Let me tell you about philosophy. Yeah, exactly. This is how it works. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. All right, so you guys all disembark from the uh, from the barge, and uh, from what you've heard from Lorcanus as well, too, is that you should have no difficulty hiring on with some other barge and making your way back up the river, too, and in faster time. It should only take two uh, two days to make your way back to um, Milborn. So, uh, what happens next, guys? You, um, you can see that uh, the docks here, uh, dock, or pier number one, pier number two, such as they are, are uh, these two things here. Um, Lorcanus is going to be loading everything down over here. Uh, and actually, you do see someone come out of the uh, shop as well, too. And hold on, let me uh, show you what uh, that is. Hold on, where is it here? Is this like a sleepy kind of town at this point? Like, are they, or are there, are oh, there things yeah. going on? Yeah, okay. No, it's, this is very, there's some, like, there's like maybe one or two people who are making their way around. Okay. Uh, but I mean, like, they're not, yeah, it's, it is a very, very, this is maybe a hundred people that live here. Oh, wow. And, okay. And you, just like the other as well, too, it is, um, here, guys, this is the woman who comes out of uh, the shop. Really goes steps forward and uh, takes <laughs> I was <her> waiting. <laughs> how, how, how do you pronounce that? I'm curious. Moranis. Nobody knows. It's not barren ass, right? It is not barren ass. No. <laughs> okay, good. No jokes. <laughs> okay, so you uh, you see this girl go, and you come walking up towards, and she, you know, uh, you, you're kind of walking in front of uh, Lorcanus then, and this little you know balding guy kind of whoa. What do you say? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> oh, yes. Well met, gentlemen and lady. Uh, how do you do? Uh, well met, uh, sir. I, I do well. And what brings you to... Uh, she looks you up and down. She says, you don't look like... Uh, I, I know well, you have a face that I would recognize had you been uh, here before. You newly arrived then. Yes, indeed. We're just uh, humble travelers passing through your fine village at the moment, uh, looking to stock up on wares and... 
Stock up unawares. What, what a fortuitous meeting then, sir. Uh, my name is uh, Baranus. I, I actually, he says he gestures back to the store. This is my store. I, you will find a wide variety of, uh, don't let our, our, the, the modest size of our, um, uh, our community, uh, suggest otherwise. Uh, the, the, our, my, uh, shop has, has goods from, from all over. I, I'm certain. What what is it that um, I have a, a matter to attend to with this gentleman here to to arrange for some of those self same goods to be delivered in as well too? But please feel free to to look uh, around the shop while you uh, while while you wait. I'll be in Thank to you, attend Adam. to you presently. Yep. Hope we can speak later. Knox uh, interrupts. Is like, is this guy boring you? Sorry not, about that. Not at all, young man. <laughs> Um, how, you, how old is she? Uh, she looks like she's probably in her like late thirties. Okay, so she knows some things. It's <laughs> so, <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> for Knox, for Knox it is. Uh, well, I'm definitely gonna check out your store. Where's? I think you absolutely <laughs> should, young man. A handsome young man like yourself would no doubt so to, uh, benefit from some of the supplies. Would find a your discerning eye would no doubt find uh, the value in many of my goods. Please, please. I'm, carry I'm on. sure that's true. It's, it seems like it might be might be lonely in this town. Of course. Please go ahead. Um, now <laughs> let's see here, Dorman. Would you kindly give me a wisdom check? I can do that. A twelve. Because you're pretty good at uh, at reading uh, the things. Nope. Ooh, nope. nope. Weird. This I'm old not, lady. He's, just, he's rolling his eyes like these guys are punching way too far above their glass. Yeah. Although it is, <laughs> you really can't get more like how we played in high school. Like every character is hitting on the first female NPC. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long ride. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> it's been a long ride. Dorman is still nice. a little grumpy. He's not into the social thing yet. What is it Churchill said about the Navy? Rum, sodomy, and the lash? <laughs> All right, exactly. I thought it was written into the second edition rules that you had to do that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so <laughs> then you guys head in, and uh, Baranus has uh, matters to deal with with uh, Lorcanus. Uh, what do the rest of you guys do? Let's see, we can make our delivery. Yeah, let's let's go get this. You know, and, and then with our payment, we can come buy stuff from the store or sell stuff. Okay, so you guys, do you want to try and catch uh, Rilgo and Knox before they head in, or you're letting them occupy themselves with whatever they're trying to do? Let, let them hang themselves, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. So, uh, Barrett, what about uh, Alanian? What are you doing? Oh, you're uh, muted, huh? I'm sorry. Dagnabbit. Son of a biscuit. Son of a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll join the others uh, headed towards the Wizard of Thurmaster. Nice. Ouster. Okay, so you guys head through town. Uh, we'll come back to Rilgo and Knox in, in a moment. I, I picture that Rilgo and Knox are both sort of conspicuously trying to be closest to the window that looks out onto the pier to see when she gets back. Yeah, of course. Um, and share a small high five. Uh, <laughs> then, um, of course, Bergor grumbles. If this town had a decent whorehouse, they wouldn't have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> This lady who's walking by with her daughter kind of looks like, oh! I know. Every, Bergor is just a foul-mouthed, grumpy dwarf today. Yes, no doubt. Okay, and so... most days. What you can spy then, uh, knowing the... Uh, you know, what, where your priorities lie, you do see that off to the, to the north there, there is a tavern, and the tavern is called the Hound and Tails. And I like the tavern. The tavern sign has seen better days. It is looking pretty battered and pretty faded. Um, but that's not your destination. Um, the finest looking house as you're passing by appears to be this place li labeled the Squire's House. Uh, it is, uh, apart from the tower, the only two-story structure. Well, I guess the tavern is two stories as well. But it's um, there is a two-story uh, structure, which is a quite nice looking building. And it has a... A uh, sigil on it as well, too. And the sigil is... Let's see here. Um, the sigil is a... Um, uh, what do you call it? Like a, a crest, like a, a shield crest or a kite shield shaped thing with a circle with um, uh, like a fortification of some kind with a big tower coming out of it. And the... 
uh, there's no one in there. You don't see anyone come out. Uh, you pass by that. Uh, it looks like the how the town is is uh, maybe only 80% occupied too. There, there's a building or two that don't seem to have anyone in it. There's chickens and like farm animals that are running loose in the uh, in the streets here as well. Um, but then you, you make your way towards the tower, and the uh, Towster's uh, Tower is a small two-story uh, stone tower. Uh, nestled next to a plain wooden house. And this is clearly not two things that were built together. Like one was built and then something was kind of slapped on the side. There is a big, heavy oak door with um, metal banding on it at the base of it. Like this is a tower that would likely, you know, withstand at least a short siege. Uh, the house looks like a house though. Like, I mean, it looks like it's a, it is a residence uh, that has no further protection or kind of uh, defenses than what the average cottage would have. So as you guys walk up towards it, there's no, um, there's no one making any, um, you know, any noise uh, inside either of them. What do you do? There's a, a door to the tower and there's a door to the house that appear to be places where you may find the person you're looking for. Dorman looks up at the tower and he's like, if the wizard's working, we best not disturb him. Let's check the house. Okay. Maybe he'll have somebody answer for him. Okay. So you um, you knock on the door to the house, and you hear an old uh, voice uh, inside. Who who is it out there? Special delivery. Delivery. Yeah. You're kind of a do 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 do. And someone seems to make their way towards the door, and you you hear a, a lock being thrown, and the door is thrown open, and standing inside, guys is someone who would give old Grizzler a run for their money in terms of age uh, or um, uh, Deercaster. It's this guy. He's all hunched over. He appears to be, uh, for, for the humans, he looks like he's uh, easily into his seventh decade of life. Uh, hunched over, only five foot three. And uh, kind of, you know, looks up at uh, some of you and looks down at others. How tall is Knox? He's 6'2". Oh, wow. So he looks way up. Oh! Oh! And looks down at the uh, little gnome. Delivery! D did you say there was a delivery? Yes, for Talster. We have come from, uh... What's, it? What's that place? Mad Magsden? Mags... A wizard Mads sent Glenn. us. Madsglen, yes. We were, from uh, from Gordrin the wizard, we have a delivery of material components. Ah! <laughs> I wondered when you would get here. Where's the, wh where's my delivery? Where's my well, delivery? Well, you have to sign for them first. No, you deliver it to me first, then I sign for things. Uh, Charlatan, uh, rogue. No, no, no. <laughs> Not far off. Uh, so he, he he reaches back, pulls the big trunk off his shoulder or his back, and says, "I've got it right here." No, <laughs> oh, wonderful, wonderful. Can, can uh, you handle twenty pounds? You, you know? So what he uh, does is one second here. He turns uh, as soon as he has his. Ah, we'll be. I'll be right back. And it uh, turns over and he muscles, you know, kind of uh, fusses around in his uh, his pockets. He pulls this big key out and then chunk, opens up the uh, the door to the tower and he disappears within. Um, those with keen eyes may spot for a brief second that it's basically a junkyard in there. If you think of like, you know, in those Storage Wars shows where they throw the thing open and there's just Quarters. like floor to ceiling crap that's stocked in there. That's kind of what he's got yeah. inside there. Uh, so he disappears in there and you hear some kind of banging around and ah, woo, ah, and then he finally uh, comes out and then carefully locks the door uh, behind him. And says, "Wonderful, wonderful." Now, signing. Uh, what? What? It did he? Did old? Uh, Gordon. Did Gordon send the same marking? I need to a wizard's mark, and then you can collect on the, um, on your goods. That's correct. Wonderful. And you deliver the contract. He says, <laughs> clever, clever he is. And then he gestures and there's a kind of pulse of magic and there's a thing kind of flares up a uh, a marking of 
Um, <laughs> actually, a little like stylized swoosh that maybe almost looks like a snail uh, that appears for a moment and then kind of fades back into as if it's like a faded watermark. And now there are two signatures that appear on the page. Uh, one of them is from Gordron, and one of them is from Touster. And he says, there you are. Thank you. Uh, th and thank you for delivering in such good condition. I will certainly let Gordron know you You certainly are seem to be a step above his normal couriers. Paying oh, top yeah. dollar, is he now? Or short couriers? Well, that's, I'm hard to see me getting into places. Hard to see you getting into places? What do you mean? Well, they distract people and uh, I can get things where they need to go. Wait, are you thieves or are you couriers? I may have mistaken. My hearing's no, not what it was. We are, we're definitely couriers. Definitely couriers. The gnome just has a big yeah. mouth. Ah, hey. that uh, seems... Hmm. Yes. Um... Now, you, uh, you see, uh, then kind of walking up uh, down the street, uh, we see Hirogo looking a little dejected, and we see Nox with what appears to be what will be f uh, shortly a black eye. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, in my loot. <laughs> yeah. that's, that seems about right. So what... Um, um, so he says, there, then you, you can take that then. Uh, you would take it to, the, the, to uh, Squire Marlin. He is the uh, he is the representative of the count, and he also is the, the well, serves as our banker here as well. They will turn that into gold for you, uh, and yes, so there. Thank you. Um, I I will tell you as well too. If you if you do insist on having a meal at the tales, don't eat the pies. Don't eat the pies. All right. Weismar has no. I, he see he s serves them half raw. This offends me on a spiritual level. Oi! <laughs> wow. There. Then. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, fine delivery. And uh, if um, yes. Well, keep it. Keep it in mind if you need something. If you need something, I yeah, will deliver. Uh, Taken somewhere. Certainly. Hold, wizard. Ah. Elanian speaks up. We have heard tales about your apprentice. Is she here? Jelaneth? No, no, she's... She was uh, due back next week. She Two weeks ago, she left to go and... Do you know her? Perhaps it seems... She's missing. She... And he kind of... He steps back and puts his hand on, on the wall. She's what? What do you mean missing? You don't know her, but you know she's missing. How do you know she's missing? We've been there in Millbourne, and we've heard from her betrothed. It seems the others in the town, they believe it. We searched for a day, found very little trace. Oh, no. No, no, no. Where did she disappear from? And Her he own. seems completely dejected. Like his, uh, his, he, his face has gone completely white. Uh, he, he looks very upset. From where? I believe it was their home at the, at the inn. I don't really remember. I wasn't here for that. The know. Baron. She yeah, always the stares Baron. there, stays there to be near Ardren. Did, did Just, you not find a? Signs of something out north of the village? Uh, scraps of cloth and an impression of something large. Oh, no, 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 no. No. If she's missing, that's... That girl's like a granddaughter to me. She... So willful, she... I didn't want a apprentice. I didn't want to mentor anyone. I have my my tasks to deal to, but she's so stubborn, so stubborn, and missing. Have you any hints of anyone who would wish her harm? No, it. Uh, well, uh, Jeleneth was a lovely, is a, a lovely girl. No one would ever speak ill of her. 
brilliant, beautiful, a gifted wizard. And... Oh, do you... Are you intending to travel back to Milbourne then? Or will you be heading south? At this point, it's my intention to return and find the girl, if possible. But my fellows are willful. I do not know their plans. Then, if, if that is your intent, then, uh, Elf, I may... You are couriers, and I have someone who you can deliver a message to, who, who could help. Um, uh, he's a man named Kuiper, and Kuiper operates a farm near the... Uh, near where near Hog Brook on the North Shore the North Shore of the river uh, he's a ranger and he if he is not aware he nary anything passes the river that he's not aware of if she's made her way down the river he would know and, and if he doesn't know he knows the other rangers, and they may have some. They may, they may know where she's gone, or or what may have taken her. If if you are intent on returning to help with the search, if you stop and deliver a message to Kuiper, I I will provide it to you before you go. I will. I will pay you ten gold pieces each for delivering the. The message and and fifty each if you find if you find Jeleneth. Well, boys, looks like we got a mission here. Then, Aragor was about halfway to the squire's house when suddenly he, you know, about faces and starts walking back forward like. Hmm. <laughs> Do you know of Gerald, the sheriff in Milbourne? Gerald, yes. He's in. He was a ranger as well. Oh, was a ranger. What are these rangers that you speak of? Um, He's a foreigner. They are uh, men who help the the threats. Um, I've been here long enough to know this for uh, for, for from personal experience. But the the threats that um, can bedevil uh, the communities in Harrenshire. They don't begin in the open. They begin in the wild. In, uh, oh, years ago, when I was still a young man, yeah, younger at least, we saw um, a tribe of voracious and warlike uh, reptile folk come from the Shrieking Mire. And there he seven. Four, five summers ago, I heard that the uh, Kuiper, Kuiper put together a militia, a force of humanoids, uh, orcs, a, a veritable horde, orcs, hobgoblins, bugbears, all sorts of nasty things that normally know their place in the Great Rock Dale. They came, but Kuiper knew. Kuiper knew when they faced them and drove them back. They keep watch. They keep watch in the wild places. Though, <laughs> from what I hear, Geralt, he can't move as freely as he once did. A dangerous craft they ply. But Kuiper, Kuiper would know. Would you, would you deliver this message for me then? Yes, we will. Then. I'm sorry, this is quite upsetting news. Uh, it's late in the day. If you can find lodging at the tails, but do not eat the pies. I will pay uh, for, for your meal as well, too. That will, uh, will be uh, my treat to you. But were you intent on leaving tomorrow? The or sooner the better. Before the trail grows. Knox is rubbing his, his eye. Oh. Oh. It's fine. Nobody act concerned. Oh, <laughs> you're all doing that. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> all 
All right, and um, then he says, then tomorrow, if you um, if you speak, there will be barge masters uh, at the the tails as well too. You you can likely find someone, um, and I will pay tomorrow up front. You have proven yourself capable couriers. We'll pay up front your fee, and uh, I will give you. I will write the note of introduction. Uh, Kuiper is a man. He kind of looks over the lot of you, older than this one, and he gestures at Knox, but younger. And he gestures at you, Rilgo, younger than that one. <laughs> you can find him. Um, his farm is just. Hold on here. I think it's west. His farm is just west, one mile west of Hogbrook on the North Shore. If you have difficulty, ask. They will all know where Kuiper's farm is. Can we, can, Kev, can you, when you get it, second, tell us the spelling of Kuiper? Yeah. Oh, great. Thank you. New problem. I've uh, added mi a missive log to our party loot. Nice. If you want me to add a separate, uh, like we can add as many of these things as you like. If you want something separate for like party notes or something like that, I can do that as well. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. Yep, done and done. So we should go get our reward for the, from the squire's house. Yeah, so get our the group, and then... 150 gold, and then go to the tavern. <laughs> See if we can't turn it into more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Um, let me, you know, guys, we're actually at our halfway point already. Holy time flies when you're making old man voices. Uh, so why don't we take our five minute break now, guys, and, uh, then we'll come back and see what happens next. Okay. Okay. Let me just put this down here. Boom. Um, oh, did I put the wrong thing? Nope, I didn't. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So, uh, oh, let's see the farms. Tauster. Put that down. All right. Afton, Deercaster. My goodness, I have a lot to go down. And I'm all by my lonesome. Okay, let's shrink that down. Boom. 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 Oops, wrong thing. Boom. All right. So, folks, we will be back in a moment. In here. All right. Cedric, Sean, howdy, guys. Enth, howdy, howdy. Oh, yeah, Cedric, no, no, I don't, uh, I, I don't charge to, uh, uh, to run these sessions. I just, I just do it because I love it. Um, and. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, I was laughing at Hobbs' uh, comments in, uh, in chat. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Hey, Brian. Outrageous. Howdy, howdy. All right. So while we're waiting, I'll get uh, something set up that I might need. Zen. Zen, Zen. <laughs> Hobbs means it's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, the other thing I was thinking uh, too, uh, John, is the um, so what, what it says about gnomes, uh, like the kind of their naming uh, customs, is that mm -hmm. gnomes have their like personal name or their like their given name. They have their clan name, and they also give themselves a nickname too. So it's like so and so, so and so, the whatever, and that could be their profession or it could be their, you know, um, 
the things they're interested in, uh, or it could be their, you know, um, their their I don't know, like characteristic, okay. whatever you whatever kind of uh, strikes your fancy. So you can feel free to. Uh, to I'll add. think of something. I think Kettleborn will be his clan name. So. Yeah, no, yeah, it totally makes sense to me. I like gnomes in the uh, AD and D setting. Totally, yeah. It, it's pretty. Uh, well, it's been it, it's been really cool reading about some of the backgrounds for uh, for all these things too. Oh, um, can I do the? I was looking at the clans dwarf kit. Oh, for okay. The book of dwarves. Yeah. It's basically just a couple more proficiencies towards a craft, so it seemed like it wouldn't unbalance the game at all. Totally. Yeah. Um, so yeah, can I do that? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Let me take a look in just uh, one second here. I I, I don't course. anticipate that'll be a problem, but. Uh... Give me a sec here. Well, it's it's a bonus to dwarves of your clan in reaction, and then a couple more proficiencies. Oh, cool. Okay, then what I'll do is uh, we'll say that your uh, your clan is from relatively close by. Then that way, it's not a wasted kind of character. Oh, well, I didn't care about. I just wanted a little bit better blacksmithing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool. Let's give me two moments here, guys. I'm just adding some uh, stuff in here. Uh, wild Brand. woods. Wild woods. Love it. Random encounters galore. Yes. Uh, well, that's one thing that's really uh, fun about these uh, playing the, the, the old school games is is the random random encounters have been a, an enormous source of not only like fun but also like unexpected story. You know, the, the way we treat it in uh, uh, our Ash game is that, you know, I, well, I, I, you've heard me say this before, but it's like the, um, it's the no prize, right? Like we, it's not a question of if this thing happened, it's that we know it did because that's what came up. We just have to come up with an explanation for why. Mm -hmm. And there's got to be some w way of interpreting what, you know, what's happened here. It's just a matter of figuring out what it is. So what, Dorman's glad to be rid of that 20 pound chest. No doubt. What was your encumbrance like? Uh, it was uh, se uh, 77 while I was carrying it. My, the borderline for my light encumbrance is 85. So <laughs> now that he's down to 57 again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a, a little heavier than uh, than expected, I think. Uh, okay. Yeah, he's a strong gnome. He is. He's a toughen. He's a toughen. That's for you sure. You find me a, a book of gainful expertise or something and get an extra strength point. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, okay, so we're, oh, Steve was grabbing his drink. Nice. Uh, Steve, I mustn't live near a, um, what do you call it, a uh, shop now, too, because he said, la I was watching uh, last session, and he said he was running to the shop. Oh. That's, that's cool. Steve, who, oh! Who, who in some game went to a 7 Eleven, like, somehow, in, like, the five Yo. minute? Do you remember that? Somebody went to, like, a convenience store. Oh, uh, could in which one? In which game? I, I don't remember now. I play too many, so I can't. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> it takes five minutes to get to the nearest convenience store for me driving there. So. I know uh, Jeff has run to the shop uh, because he's in a small town. Maybe it was Jeff. Mm. He's run. There's a corner store, kitty corner for me. So well, that's what we're just asking, Steve. Is oh, that nice. whether you, uh, you know, you went to? I just made some popcorn, but. Oh, okay, nice. And now I'm so hungry for popcorn. <laughs> My wife is, just made popcorn too, actually, and now I can smell it. I'm... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Melt, melted butter. Mm. Yep. That's, oh my god, I'm yeah. drooling. Uh, let's see here. What are we doing? What are we doing? Mm. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to find one. Oh my goodness, where is it? Popcorn, incidentally, is considered a grain. Uh, so if uh, you're looking to uh, hit on your 13 food groups during the day, popcorn counts. The food pyramid. The food pyramid is the greatest bit of stupidity that's ever. Because the food pyramid used to say that you would have like eight helpings of grain a day. Can you yeah, imagine eating eight on. portions of carbs in a day? <laughs> what, what human being has eight types of grains? Well, really? Like, it's, Why is there an obesity crisis? I don't know. <laughs> Because you guys are telling us to eat a loaf of bread every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Yeah, me, uh, me and my wife are about to start a lower carb kind of diet shift, so. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's, uh, we, we, we just uh, gra uh, 
grated up some cauliflower last night for like fake rice and had some mm. stir fry. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't cool. taste like rice, but it wasn't bad. You you, you grate it up and then you uh, saute it yeah. on the on the pan. It's pretty good. Yeah, they've got you can get uh, cauliflower rice from there's a Thai place in, uh, near my office that we uh, I go to. I, I don't because I am uh, terrible self control, but. Uh, if I'm going there and I'm signing up for the sauces that are on my pad thai, I, I'm, I'm, you know, you, you don't need to do a half-ass measure of like, and, and let's add a diet coke with it, uh, or nice. cauliflower rice. But I, I hear it tastes really good though. Yeah, as long as you don't overcook it. That's mm. that same thing that broccoli or whatnot gets it gets sulfur build up and then it's gross. So. Mm. Yeah, just okay. why a lot of people don't like greens or spinach from the cans is because of that. Sulfur mm -hmm. bit makes it better, and yeah. Hobbs, are you still following the vegetarian diet? Vegan. Vegan diet. Holy smokes! Wow. Yeah. Good for you, bud. Yeah. Well, he managed yeah, to get through a couple old school cons with uh, maintaining that diet too. So. That's right. I don't mess around. No, that's hard. Do you have to bring stuff? Nope. Yeah. Usually, just use the vending uh, machines. The vegan vending machines. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are all over here in Wisconsin. <laughs> I am a, I'm both impressed and empathetic towards your situation. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's by choice, you know. It's not. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. No, that's yeah. great. So, guys, we are um, back in, boom, uh, Third Master. So, nice. um, are you heading to the... Uh, well, well, I guess what happens next? We, last we left you guys, you were talking to uh, Towster and uh, Touster uh, offered uh, a bit of a, a gig for you guys. Yes. We've accepted, uh, and we're going to go get paid now. Yes. Okay, so that means you're heading over to the Squire's house. Yes. So uh, you head up towards there, and the um, uh, this is, a, like, hands down, the nicest looking and also most well-maintained house uh, in the, you know, uh, in the in entire village here. Uh, you walk up, and who is the one who's doing the, the talking here? Um, I wonder if the pretty boy should... Do, well, did he get a black eye? No, that was Knox. Um, no, we're good. Uh, yeah, you don't want Knox doing any talk. Maybe maybe <laughs> the, the bar in the real go? My like pleasure. Yeah. Okay. All you have to do is get the money. So Just what do you money, say? Okay? What do you say, Rogo? Uh, okay, no, sorry, wait a second. What, what point are we at in this? So I just I just asked him for the money? All right. Well, here's, Hello. The, here's the completed document. We have to turn it in and get paid. Okay. I knock on the door, and with a pleasant smile, I say, greetings again. Okay. So you knock oh. on the door, and uh, the door is answered by someone who is uh, dressed in a, uh, basically, uh, mm, it's uh, chain armor with the same uh, tabard uh, that's on the outside there. The, uh, the kind of kite shield with the uh, keep with the tower sticking out of it too and he um, he looks mm, young-ish maybe 22 23 uh, this is someone who knows how to carry the spear in comparison to the town guard this guy knows how to use this thing uh, he you know answers opens the door kind of looks yes hello sir good day to you I have some business with the master of the household if he's around with the with Marlon? Correct. Okay. Um, wait here. So he closes the door, he walks in, and then he comes back, and he is now uh, accompanied by someone. And uh, let me get the... Oh, you know what? I forgot to move these down, too. Uh, where is it here? Do, 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 do. I'm going to add one more handout. Handout. Oh, wrong screen here. Boom, my library. I think I have you to thank, Steve, for the fact that I can't click on something without saying boom. <laughs> All right. Now, um, the door is, um, is answered by now uh, this guy. And I'll, I know I haven't showed you that. I'm going to show you in this one second here. He... Uh, Opens the door and kind of steps out. He's dressed quite well. But he's really thin. And he's kind of stooped over. He's almost uh, maybe even a little taller than you, Knox, only he's kind of hunched over. 
And he says, Yes! Uh, good day, sir. Well met. Uh, we're just here to, uh, well, complete a business transaction uh, with uh, What Martin. sort of business do you have? Is it oh, with it's... the Count? Uh, correct, yes. I am the Count's representative here. Oh, I see. Um, well, it was a private transaction. We have a, a document that we have brought him that he requested. Uh, and he was going to um, compensate us for our troubles. The Count was going to pay something to you? I didn't hear of that. And he takes the, the sheet and he, uh, the, that you have. He says, this is a letter of credit. This is from some wizard for, for Tau, sir, over there. Um, yes, I believe so. Correct. And you are the parties who have delivered. That is correct. Well, then why did you say this was from the Count, then? What business uh, is of this of his? I'm afraid I don't know the uh, the, the depths of the situation, sir. No, we're merely messengers. Um, Dorman, out of the corner of your eye, you can see that there are kids who have kind of poked their head around the, the corner, and they're looking at this, and one of them is making the other one, like, fucking crack up by doing an impression of, of a squire. Dorman gets a big grin on his face, and... So he says, Left very up. well. They, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, guys. Was it 150 uh, flat? 150 flat. 150 flat. I'll collect your funds. Would you Would you want that in gold or in copper? Gentlemen, I, I think probably gold is preferable. Uh, thank you. Gold yeah. it is, then. Wait here. And he heads inside. And the... Um, uh, the kids, you know, kind of walk over, and they have that that kind of you know boldness that uh, you know young boys have at a certain age. Uh, and they walk up and th and they say, "What's your business with the squire?" Yeah, what's your business with the squire? We're making him pay us. Making him pay you? Yes. Are you new guards? Not really. We are couriers. Oh. Where are you from? Well, we just came from Melbourne. Huh. See, I told you. And then the door opens, uh, and then they, they, the two kids are like, oh, get out of here, get out of here. And uh, uh, the squire kind of walks out and sees them run off, and he hands over a, a small sack to, uh, I guess, to, to you, real go. There you are. Thank you very much, good sir. Um, and thank you. All right. Uh, if that's all, if you need anything else, uh, feel free to contact us. We should be in town for a little while longer. He turns and looks at you. What would I need you for? Uh, we, 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 we are capable of a variety of things, but uh, it looks like you don't need anything. So, <laughs> Very well, then. He turns then. and he looks uh, up we'll at the guard, and the guard kind of... Mm. And he looks back at you. Are you drunk? Not at the moment. No. And he turns and uh, heads back inside. And the guard kind of, you know, wait, waits until uh, the squire gets all the way inside and then kind of looks at you guys and it kind of gives you that cop look. You know, he's not trying to, like, intimidate you or whatever. Well, he is kind of trying to intimidate you without being obvious about it. That kind of, like, hmm. Then hmm. he heads back in, boom, the door shuts. So you've met Squire Marlon. So what happens next, guys? You have some cash in hand. It appears you may have a new gig, and uh, apparently a missing apprentice. We should divvy up the loot. So Sounds assume good. it is split between everybody. There's seven members of the party, mm -hmm. I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So okay. we're... We have 167 gold, which is 23 each with eight silvers left over. Eight silvers left eight, over? Yeah, eight silvers each so that's times seven plus we have 33 silver pieces divide that by seven and that's 12 more silver pieces and then we have wait hold on what what's going on here oh, well, that's kind of <laughs> so like, of why is the number going up okay, <laughs> okay we have 160 care by two we have a thousand platinum what <laughs> okay i'll just add it up at the okay just an estimated gold piece value, then we can work with fractions. Sure. 
Okay. So we, we got 150 from from him, but and the, where did the other one come from? We had from uh, uh, some from bandits. bandits, right? The, the, yeah. Okay, so everybody yeah. gets 24 gold, three silver, and two copper. Okay, let's. Uh, well, you know, what? I'll put that on the guys' uh, character sheets. The other guys who aren't here today. Uh, sorry, can you say uh, or in chat maybe uh, what the the total is? Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. 24 GP. Let me just get here, Calador. I'll put that on their character sheets for them in Chael. Okay. And how much are they getting? Oh, come on. Nice. Okay. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was trying to make things too complicated. I just, you know, that's what places are no good problem. for a reason. <laughs> okay. Quantity. Uh... Time to find some girls who are fast and loose. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so Chael has his uh, rewards, and okay. For those of you that are thieves, remember you get two gold, two experience per gold piece. Oh, oh, you know I'm putting the wrong place here. Jeez, uh, twenty. So it's fifty. What is that? Fifty, sixty-two, um, three and two. Sorry, I put. Uh, uh, they're the currency calculator there, and I put them in, in there instead of putting them in his actual mm -hmm. character sheet, so. Mm -hmm. I am not schmuck. 24 Yeah, let's get rid of that. Alrighty. Okay, so then, um, where are you guys heading next, then? Uh, tavern, I think. Yeah, it's right. the tavern. It's the tails uh, tavern, and does it also have uh, sleeping quarters as well? Uh, they do. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. So if you guys uh, make your way into the the hound and tails, and again the uh, the uh, sign, uh, the tails of the uh, name are those of foxes, um, uh, and the sign has seen definitely uh, better uh, days. Uh, as you walk in, the um, the place is, to be honest, you know, a sty. Uh, it smells like something has burned in the oven, uh, and behind the bar uh, is a man who, where are we here? Boo, 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 boo. who we were told was uh, Wiesmar, I believe, and Wiesmar. Weesmar looks like this. Cool. So he's cleaning one of those cups with a filthy rag behind the um, uh, behind the, the bar, uh, and he's talking to some you know older guy who's sitting at the bar with him, and he looks up at the lot of you as you come in. Drinks. Of course. Dorman's given the pie. You're hungry too. We got pies. <laughs> no, thank you. Right. Suit yourself. The rest of you, you want pies? Go to your pies. You got any else on the menu? Uh. It's actually not. Sorry, it's mutton pies. Mutton pies, bread, cheese. Cheese has gone off though. Sorry. You said bread though. Is bread okay? Bread okay. Got bread, and he clunk hits on the table and like bread, cheese, and pies. I guess we'll take the bread. Bread. And uh, he heads over. So, yeah, Laney and <laughs> <laughs> happy to go into the abandoned buildings. Uh, I, I, when when Knox hears that, he's like, I'm right behind you. Okay. So, two of you guys hop up and uh, head out. But I'll stick, I'm going to throw down some money to pay for the f first round for all my companions. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Telstra would have given you money uh, so enough for that as well, too, because he was going to. Okay, cool. Right. Yeah, he was going to pay for your first round. Uh, he just said, right. do not eat the, the pies. Um, 
let me think here. Uh, Dorman, would you kindly give me a wisdom check at uh, minus two? Excuse me, minus two to your wisdom. Okay, so I need to get under a ten to make this. Okay, go. Great. I got a 10. Yeah, okay, so a what, you know, you're looking at this place and you've, you know, I think you've traveled enough You've and you've worked in the kind of, you know, innkeeper's racket, you know, uh, uh, enough. If you guys stay here, you've got a chance of, uh, of catching uh, something. Uh, they're, 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 this is a, the, exactly the kind of small town podunk you know, place that is rife with fleas or lice or something like that. Hmm. Dorman's... He's been on a boat for three days. He didn't like... This place is horrible, and he's in a bad mood now. So he's like, should I tell everybody or just let them suffer? <laughs> he wants to take it out on everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, he likes these guys too much. Um, he leans over to Burger and says, um, we should probably sleep outside. You know what, guys? Um, so I'm looking at the uh, cantrip spell. And the reason I am is because, uh, remember, one house rule is each of you magic users can cast cantrip once per day for free to reflect your kind of like magical whatever. And then what that does is it gives you a number of hours equal to your level that you can do some obvious magical shit. I would let you clean a bed or something like that with magic. That's right. I don't think I'd be able to get a restful night's sleep here anyway. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So he brings the drinks over, and the drinks are served in disgusting, dirty mugs. Uh, the beer is, like, armpit warm, and uh, it's not particularly uh, tasty and very watered down as well. Probably mercifully watered down, given how it tastes. Um, what happens next, guys? Uh, uh, he otherwise will ignore you. He has no interest in engaging with you guys whatsoever. He's gone back to his sort of grunting conversation with someone else. Arlen looks Is there like anybody else in this tavern aside from us? There is a couple, uh, yeah, a couple uh, um, barge masters. And... Go ahead. Do they have, like, a... a a code or a hand signal or something for the better stuff or are they drinking the same oh no they're drinking the same stuff they're also eating the pies ah uh, although it seems like they're getting about halfway through and then be like nope <clears throat> nope nope i'm pushing them back okay Dorman is so, seriously yeah. starting to consider homicide homicide <laughs> or suicide i think you can say opening a restaurant i'm like what's well, this, this campaign <laughs> is taking a turn <laughs> Perligo says, oh, enough of this, and he breaks out his loot and plays a song just for fun. For the... Okay. Nice. So, yeah, uh, for, for, I think because, let's hear it, because you're so charming, I think you're going to have a pretty good chance. Huh. Um, I actually need to check the reaction on that one. Is it on my DM screen? I wonder. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Awesome. Once again, I don't know why I always sound surprised like something that is obviously belongs in a <laughs> DM screen is there, but I'm... Right. It's like I'm, I'm a fucking, uh, like, I haven't got object permanence yet. Oh, my God. <laughs> this DM screen has useful tools on it. Holy smokes. <laughs> All right. Uh, so he's indifferent, but I rolled quite bad for, uh, he, he looks up and you start playing. What kind of song do you play, Rilgo? I think this will dictate what his reaction is going to be. Sort of a, 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 a lighthearted sort of uh, d ditty dirge from uh, yeah, the folksy kind of song. Uh, yeah, yeah, with Something you could sort of skip to or dance to. Yeah. Okay. Um, he, I think, says, cut that racket out. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't like it. the, the uh, upbeat, you know, jaunty songs are not something that he is particularly keen on hearing. It didn't read the crowd so well there. All right. No, he unfortunately <laughs> did not. Well, that that does it for Dorman. He, he basically just scoots his chair back, loudly stands up, looks at the innkeeper, flips the chair over, and walks out the door. <laughs> Take that chair. He kind of huffs, and then that's it. How about the rest of you guys? I know that uh, Alenian and Nox have headed out already. I'm going to yeah, catch up to them. Gregor's going to sort of tap Rilho on the shoulder and uh, step outside, too. Okay. All right, guys. So you all uh, are outside now. What, um, what do you want to do next? Graffiti the sign. 
Somebody give me a boost. I think there was... Maybe we should go find our friends. They were apparently... Uh... Well, so one person can go back to secure a barge for tomorrow. And then the rest of us can maybe, like, make camp outside the town walls. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm with Elenian about checking out those abandoned buildings, which might be a good place to make our camp. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll go secure the bars, and I'll be able to track you guys down. Sure. So I think you are able to, um, you, you ask around, and there's a guy um, named... Uh, uh, let's see. I got Sven in my head, but I don't. I don't want to be Sven. <laughs> He's gonna start talking like the uh, Swedish chef. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, my cousin uh, Corey used to play in our uh, Star Wars campaign. Uh, he, uh, they're Dutch, uh, so for some reason he thought that that was close enough to the Swedish. He had that whole Swedish chef song down pat when we were kids, uh -huh, and it awesome. made me laugh so hard. <laughs> That's great. Um, uh, Tolman, uh, T-H-O-M-A-N, that's your, your new one. Nice. So Tolman uh, is uh, someone who can be hired for uh, for heading back. He's uh, he's bringing uh, some supplies uh, from, it's actually lumber. Uh, he's bringing up river okay. uh, back up towards uh, Melbourne and then further. So uh, yeah, so you're, you're no problem with that. Um, any where you're going to just kind of find one of the abandoned buildings and, and kind of make your, your camp in there. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, we have to, you know, we're gonna, I think Hobbs, I think you're muted. Scout around. There's supposed yeah. to be uh, abandoned buildings in town as well. Uh, there are, yeah. Oh, right. That's I mean, true. If you break camp. into the ones in town, uh, oh, they're broke. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like these are still within in. town. No, we don't do that. Nah. Well, you don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see here. Uh, I'm gonna make one quick roll here. Cause I love me some random tables. <clears throat> and you have Hobbs to thank for this. No, and it's uh, guys. It's a beautiful day. Uh, it's a beautiful spring evening. Uh, it's, you know, uh, it, it dips down to me. Well, I, I'm going to say Celsius, which won't matter to you guys at all. It's cool enough. Like, you, you kind of have to keep blankets around you, but it's it's nothing colder than that. The wind is completely uh, calm. Um, it's a little damp. Uh, it's a little damper here uh, than it is, you know, in Melbourne. And certainly sleeping outside will be a little different. No doubt because it's close to the Shrieken Mire. Um... But yeah, I mean, otherwise it's a it's not a bad night, and especially after the confines of uh, the barge, you know, or in the camping. On, uh, this is a little bit better. You do have an actual, albeit ruined, uh, ceiling above you. You do have uh, a place you can you can sleep. Um, the evening other passes uneventfully. I think maybe there's a point where if you're keeping a fire or something like that, maybe one of the those same guards kind of comes out to check on you. What are you, what are you up to out here? You've seen the how bad the tavern is. He looks at you. You didn't eat the pies, did you? No, I could hardly drink the liquid that they call ale. Well, just be glad you don't live here. Don't burn these down, will you? I'll get in trouble. So he turns and uh, he heads back in. He maybe chit chats. If you want to chit chat with him for a bit, you can do that. Uh, but otherwise, no. He uh, he'll head back in. Uh, I am curious. Yep. About something. About his, uh, the person who seems to lead the militia. We haven't heard who he was. The person who leads the militia, what guy? The guy who was at the squire. He seemed like he knew what he was doing. I'm assuming he kind of seemed like he was a cop and maybe. Yeah. Was... Yeah, that guy. That guy. Well, so, what, yeah, what this guy tells you, and this guy's Sven. See, I've been, I've been saving it. Now it's fucking time. Sven's time to shine. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Sven. He, he sits down with you guys for, you know, he kind of looks back at the walls and is like, shrugs. Clearly, you know, a, a man committed to his profession uh, decides to sit down and have a, a, you know, a drink with you guys if you if you offer. And he'll he'll share, he'll, you know, spill the tea, as it were, about uh, these guys. So the squire, uh, as they call him, is the local representative. Um, his name's Marlon, uh, but everyone calls him Squire really out of sarcasm, but Squire Marlin doesn't quite get it. Uh, so Marlin is uh, intensely disliked by everyone. 
uh, as, you know, uh, figures of uh, Ducal or... Um, um, what would be is it someone from a count? What's the the cognate of uh, Ducal for count? Is it one? Like countel's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh. <laughs> count count. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. Anyone in chat knows? Uh, uh, please feel free to to let us know. <laughs> This feels like a like a, a, a failing of my Gygaxian uh, vocabulary. Right. Because like he would know that shit. Yeah, it's countish. I don't know. <laughs> countish. <laughs> so where did you get the title? I don't know, I'm countish. <laughs> um You know it, it, that this really doesn't doesn't matter. Whatever the uh, the the authority of the count. Uh he so he, he is the, the the local here. He's responsible for taxes uh, and tithes. Uh, he collects from, you know, uh, man manages the money. And because they have so much money going in, he also serves as the, uh, the effectively the local bank, the, the credit lender, and for keeping people's um, uh, wealth as well, too. Uh, he, he's a pain in the ass, and he is, uh, he sounds like a woman, but he is, uh, that's the character saying that, not me. Uh, he, but he is, he's not a cheat. You can say many things. The 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 man that you must have spent is one of his household guard. He has a, an escort of four guards that uh, are with him as the representative of the count. They're not part of the militia. They are part okay. of uh, protecting the squire. Does he need protection? <laughs> He's not well liked uh, by any means, but you know, you can't kill everyone you don't like. Otherwise, well. I will. And he looks at you a little confused. Uh, remember, these are real people reacting that way. You, that's saying something like a sociopath. They don't take murder lightly. They don't take vandalism lightly. This mm -hmm. is they live normal lives. So, yeah, if you're intending to scare him, you may do so a little bit. So he did. Uh, he says, "Well." there are consequences to that. He looks and he's trying to judge whether you're joking or not. Do you smile? He does. Okay, and then he's like, oh, <laughs> he seems quite relieved that you were joking about it. Polite company and all. Yeah. Commodore. Okay, great. Awesome. Great, great, great. I, um, I improved my vocabulary today. Yeah, there we go. That's what we're here for. We're here to learn <laughs> and do stupid <laughs> voices. So, the... Uh, so what, what this guy, what Sven uh, also uh, will share with you is a little bit of other kind of gossip. So, uh, you know, what what you guys may ask is like looking at the map, the Heronshire is really divided between uh, two different families. Uh, the Carmen, you've heard about the Carmen family, the Meth family that owns all the mines that are in the north of uh, Melbourne and that own kind of the lands around there. Uh, and then there is the um, uh, the Count, uh, Count Parfrey. And... Uh, uh, Parfrey has been out here a little longer from the sounds of things, uh, but uh, he only has one heir, uh, he, uh, like one offspring. He's only got one child, and, and the kid's not really all that old. He kind of gestures to you, Knox, and he's like, he's, no, I'm not sure he's even as old as you. So, you know, the um, uh, Marlin is the staff he had to spare. Like, you, what you guys would be thinking is a place that's relatively, you know, when the lands consist of some farms, one community, and one um, one keep, why would he not send one of his offspring down here? But that's that's the reason why. So he's got instead this kind of, uh, you know, um, whistle-voiced or kind of high-pitched voiced uh, man uh, who, uh, who manages this. Hmm. That seems to be uh, quite a predicament. Oh, what's that? Not having enough heirs to go around or people. I you tell know, you, like... from what I hear, the Count sure kept trying. Uh, and it was only... Um, yeah, uh, his his family. I mean, they, they've been out here longer uh, than uh, any other family. Uh, they, uh, uh, that two, at least two centuries... And the thought, there was, uh, before my time, uh, but up until uh, the, sorry, I'm just trying to find the name here, guys. I'll give you the name of the, mm -hmm. 
of the Count and his offspring. Where is it? Where is it? I heard it. It's none of your goddamn business. No, that's not right. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> it's, it's an Irish name? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not it doesn't spell it's not spelled that way. <laughs> no, no, it's a, it's like six G's and a right. bunch of H's. Right. E's and I's in the wrong place. Yeah. It's a Welsh name, I guess. <laughs> is what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, um, so they divide the uh, they have a um, gazetteer to um, Herenshire and then they sort of put other stuff in other places as well. So, yeah. it makes it tricky to find uh, stuff. Impressive layout work. Yeah, it's this is again okay. before we were talking actually, Hobbs, before you got on about uh, the um, <laughs> consistency of uh, descriptions. Like the one of the biggest uh, challenges with getting familiar with uh, second edition is just how poorly they communicate the rules. Giving uh, you know using different ways to refer to armor class bonuses as sometimes it's a plus two to armor class sometimes it's a minus two benefit to your AC sometimes it's plus two to your AC it's not quite clear which means what hmm. I mean we all grew up with well some of us grew up with it so it's all intuitive but it definitely makes it a little more challenging I grew up with AD&D &D. me too oh yeah yeah, yeah. Man, we're talking about Zeb Cook here, boys. Mm. Mm -hmm. Gary Gaiax was the man. That he was. Yeah. I don't know. I think uh, AD and D was worse than Second Edition, <laughs> as far <laughs> as that goes. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. The uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So here I got it, guys. Uh, the his son uh, is named. Um, Lintern. And hold on here. Uh, Lintern is barely a man, he says. Uh, yeah, 18 years. Uh, there were, like, he was born when um, Sven was still a, um, uh, a, a kid, uh, but his parents say, like, there was a time when they thought that uh, uh, Count Palfrey was actually not going to have, like, the line would die with him. Oh, better get that boy married off soon and uh, get some heirs. Indeed. Yeah, indeed. Uh, the, uh... Yeah, Crusader Kings 2 style. Search lustful. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Does anybody know why this guy's been unsuccessful in uh, producing an heir? I'm going to do step on a gnome kind of inherent thing and say he was cursed. I'm gonna. I asked the Count guard. Sandy or uh, Paul Frey. Cool. Uh, uh, it just. Uh, like, it, like, has he had a bunch of different wives, and it just five, never worked out? Five wives. Mm. Sandy or the young girl a, went missing. Count, the count himself uh, is <laughs> is has segued into his seventieth year. He was um, more than fifty uh, when um, young Lintern was born. Hmm. It's unclear. Uh, some talk about a, a curse on their line, but um, from what uh, we, I've only uh, met the the boy once. But where uh, Parfrey was, what you would expect from a count, the son seemed right decent. Hmm. As such types go, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, anything else you want to so, get out of... Uh, just just for my edification, not necessarily in character, how does the Count thing and having a son and an heir and all that sort of stuff work with the kind of representative democracy thing um, going well, it's on not, with the yeomanry? It's not really... It's a kind of representative democracy... Yeah. This is one of these things. Within that stuff, there still are nobility stations and whatever else. It's really more a recognition, a recognition of uh, land, uh, of ownership of land, and an ability to 
raise up troops and stuff like that more so okay. than it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. It's yeah. also likely, I mean, it speaks to the age of his family uh, as opposed to the um, uh, the Carmans as well, too. Again, the Carmans didn't have mm-hmm. any kind of designation to their land. So this may just be a legacy of when uh, this was under uh, Keolundish uh, rule. Speaking of which, too, I forgot to tell you guys. So languages, languages, languages. Uh, you all speak common, which is the sort of the common trade tongue that is uh, anywhere across the Flanais. Uh, you, you would find someone who would understand what you're saying. Uh, you will also all speak uh, Keolundish, which is sort mm-hmm. of the local, it's the, the v- dialect of uh, of common that is developed around uh, uh, the kingdom of Keolund and the subsidiary states that are around there. Okay. Oh, and uh, Hobbs and uh, George, uh, mm-hmm. you're so you're uh, you can spend proficiency uh, points to or you know ranks or whatever to to gain new languages if you want to. But you also have a a number of languages that you can learn over the course of play, uh, equal to whatever your bonus is. So okay. we we just keep them as like banked slots. And if, you, if there's something you're like, oh, I want to spend time learning this, then we'll do that. Or if there's something we need to add in, like Hobbs, I saw in chat earlier, you had mentioned that you also speak uh, gnome, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So you, you just we'll we'll add that stuff in as necessary, and then we'll use the bonus languages as your max number you can get. So Wait. common and Keolandish don't count toward that. Nope. Number. Nope. And any of the racial nope. languages that you have on your sheet, like Hobbs, uh, Elanian also speaks uh, Sylvan Elf and High Elf. Cool. Because you got both of those dialects uh, as well, just as for free for being an elf. It's yes. something you dabbled in in your hundred and whatever years that you've been around. <laughs> That's what I think I'm thinking I, about the conjugation of high elf. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I picked up elven from Elanian. So I'm going to make that one in the language. Sylvan or high? I think Elanian high. Elanian speaks Sylvan. Oh, he speaks Sylvan? So that's yeah. his native in, tongue. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you so, want a dialect uh, that, that you could so speak that no one would understand, uh, then that's something that only a two no. would speak. I'll, I'll go with Sylvan. Sylvan? Okay. Yeah. All right. So then, and then, uh, Stebo, I think you speak Elvish uh, or Elven, Elvish, Elvish uh, as well too. You, um, uh, you would speak uh, High Elvish, right? So, what, um, what happens next, guys? Uh, unless anything else happens in the evening, uh, there's no attacks or anything. Uh, the well, we're we're are we setting a watch or not? What do you think, guys? I think if we have an standard operating procedure where we would definitely do that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So standard, I just roll randomly, and then whoever I roll, that's the person who's keeping watch. Yeah, no one's got Wyvern watch, watch or something like that as a spell. Yeah, because we will just make it even in terms of how much time each person's spending. Okay. And unsurprisingly, it will not happen during uh, Keldor or uh, Chael's uh, <laughs> turns. Yeah. For some reason, they always get really sound sleeps on the... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Curious. Okay. So then the uh, the following morning, guys, you know, uh, uh, morning comes and the, the, the ruins, you know, your, your uh, fire has gone cold. The uh, like the dew of morning has is uh, kind of clinging to everything and the weather um, remains. Looks like it's going to be a nice, clear day. Um, do you wish to do now, Steve, you and and actually and uh, uh, George as well. You guys had gone into um, uh, Baron. Uh, what was it here? Baroness? Uh, Baroness's story, yeah. Uh, did you want to purchase anything in there? No, I don't think so. That We went in there before we got paid, so I think I just was, you know, in there for other reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. that led to a black guy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then if there is anything you wish to pick up, you can go ahead and do that now. then. Uh, otherwise, um, do you want to cut to your scene with... Um, uh, Towster. Yeah, yeah, let's do good. it. Okay, so you um you guys are you know knock on uh, Towster's door. It seems that he doesn't actually make use of that tower, <laughs> really. At least he's in his house again, uh, and he invites you inside this time, uh, to in order to to pay you and whatnot. And inside his uh, his house, he has uh, quite a bit of um. There's like a like an alchemist's lab, um, active in here. See, it seems that he's quite. I think uh, let's see here. Does anyone have uh, the spellcraft um, proficiency? I do. I yeah. do as well. Go ahead and make a proficiency check, guys. Let's see how much right. you can gather from this stuff. Nope. 
Nope. <laughs> 19. <laughs> What's this dude? Smash. Um, so you can we tell... Have, uh, uh, four uh, Sonic Fortune if you want to re-roll that. Oh yeah, you guys still have four Sonic Fortune left if you want. Uh... I, I mean, I don't know if it's worth spending on that. So I, I and also, you know what? In character, Knox doesn't care. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so Dorman, what you can see is that there. I mean, he's he's clearly working on <laughs> potions. He is crafting some kind of potions in here. Ooh, that kind of ties in with cooking a little bit. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> so I mean, I, meth. I think chemistry. with where you guys are. Oh, Hobbs and George too. We are using the um, training uh, optional rules. It's something that's recommended for this campaign. Uh, so you guys, if you uh, when you get enough XP to go to another level, you do need to go and get training from someone who is a higher level than you. Cool. So yeah, and this what you can tell is that this what what he's working on is well beyond what your uh, what your training is, uh, Dorman. Okay. Um, right. So, Knox, you have no clue. You're just like, uh. yeah, I'm like, huh? Yeah, making some weird brew. So, yeah. yeah, that's the weirdest still I've ever seen. The exactly. yeah, he brings uh, then uh, over to you guys uh, a, a um, uh, like a leather uh, scroll uh, case that's got a note inside, uh, and he pays each of you. So you can go ahead and add ten gold uh, to each of your lists as well too. Uh, he emphasizes. You know, and you, you can tell. I mean, he, he has the the concern equal to what um, uh, what was his name? Arden, Andrin, uh, to what Andrin had, or what her uh, fiance had. He seems genuinely concerned about her, me you know, going missing. Um, please, when, once you uh, w w once you have once you have word, please, please send word back from. If if not from you, from from Kuiper, ensure that he sends word down river. Thank you, thank you. And he kind of takes your hands, Dorman. You were the one. Oh no, was who was doing the talking? Was it Rilgo or was it Dorman? Uh, yeah. Dorman here. Dorman well, here. Okay. Elenian was the one who mentioned the, the mission, and I was just Elenian, right? Elenian, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he he kind of takes your your hands, Elenian, and says, "Thank you, thank you." Lanian kind of glances down as if to brush him off, but it accepts it. Of course, there's nothing less than what we should do. Of course. <sighs> then, I wish you safe travels. You found passage, then? Indeed we did. Good. Good, good. Then, safe travels. And please, find her. So, uh, if you guys, uh, nothing else happens there, then you guys uh, leave, and you leave the thriving metropolis of Thurmaster behind you. So, uh, hiring on, let's go back to the map here, guys. Hiring on, it will only take you about a day and a half to get to around where you think Kuiper's uh, farm will, uh, will be. So... You guys uh, hop in the uh, the barge, and the barge looks... I mean, it's its honestly indistinguishable from the, the last one you were on. It seems that you have a very specific type, and you guys start making your way uh, once again downriver through the uh, un, um, uh, un kind of cultivated but uh, quite, uh, quite fetching redwood, and then past on the southern shore, you can see the wild and um, primal uh, thornwood forest. Uh, you reach that uh, hog brook about halfway through the next day. And uh, let's do some weather checks here, guys. Hold on, Kev. Are you saying you want to concern yourself with the weather? That's so unlike you in a sandbox. <laughs> well, we're trying new things here, guys. So, what? Um, whoopsies. It's good. And yeah, otherwise, I mean, the, the day is. Uh, the weather has been uh, quite favorable in the last couple of days. So it is a, you know, scattered clouds kind of day when you uh, you pass the the hogs, uh, the hog brook. And hog brook sort of disappears. It's wide enough. Uh, it you, You're not sure you could actually navigate a boat down there. You might need to kind of get, like, certainly not a barge like this, a, a smaller boat maybe. Uh, or like a canoe or something like that, but um, yeah, there is a stony kind of shore 
that seems to lead along the the hog brook and then it disappears very quickly into the spreading uh, thornwood but you reach a point uh, about maybe near the end of the second day when you you know you guys reach a um, uh, you reach sort of a little dock maybe uh, that's uh, you know that, that sticks out from the side of the shore uh, you hop up you you make your way up and uh, onto the uh, the you know up the banks of the river and then uh, down towards the nearest uh, farmhouse and it does look a lot like this as well and as you're passing there are some farm hands you know working in the fields and after asking where you are they the, the farm hands indeed confirm that this is Kuiper's farm uh, you should be able to find him near the uh, he's if he's not in the barn uh, he'll be out uh, near the uh, uh, the fields so you guys head in and uh, wander around you know there's a couple the farmhands sort of notice that you guys are wandering around but don't make any fuss over it no one tries to obstruct you and it's it is indeed in the barn where you find uh, Kuiper and you before you are even introduced to him you're it's easy to tell him apart from the um, the the kind of uh, farm workers the the domestics or not domestics but the um, the I guess laborers that are that are working here let me just give you a quick handout here and just out of curiosity what, what did we see other farms as we were going along or is he sort of out here on his own no no there's there's farms that are all yeah. like for the entire stretch this the right. whole okay. uh, yeah the, the whole stretch of the river that you've passed so far has all been up until the um, uh, the redwood uh, is all mm -hmm. cultivated land it okay. stops about maybe uh, a mile uh, before the uh, the redwood and then it doesn't commence again to the other side but yeah okay. it's it's pretty much this whole region is all uh, cultivated got it uh, here we go uh, this guy just carries himself with he he stands you know a head taller than the um, uh, the farm workers and it, the way he's instructing everyone seems to be with a bit of a commanding presence and this is what he looks like guys so and he is uh, checking on a uh, a horse a horse that seems to be um, uh, he's checking its leg and talking to one of the uh, stable hands. I think just maybe perhaps a, another day, maybe two, and she'll be able to be back in the field. And he kind of scratches the horse's nose and it kind of... And he says, that's right, just rest. And from somewhere on his person, he, he produces an apple and the, the horse gobbles it up quickly. He scratches its nose. And he's, uh, you know, he puts his hand on the um, uh, stable boy and says, "Just be sure she stays in in her uh, in her pen." And he turns and and sees the lot of you. And he says, "Hello, Kuiper of Hair and Shire." Oh shit! Oh, I thought I was muted. <laughs> I wasn't though. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is uh, is Kuiper, and he looks over to all you. What's your name, sir? We're couriers. We have a message from Towster. He has a letter. He looks curious. So he of walks over. And he uh, uh, he <laughs> accepts the, uh, the message. He pops it out and reads it. And uh, he has a look of alarm kind of goes on his face uh, as he reads through this. And he looks up. He says, "You, your, your name. What is it?" He says to you, Elanian. Elanian of Dreadwood. Elanian uh, of Dreadwood, and he shakes your hand, and he's got that, like Commander Blop, handshake where he just fucking pulps your hand, not intentionally, but he's just he's a big, strong dude. So he kind of you know uh, shakes your hand. And he says, "The Towster has mentioned you in here." Uh, I, I take it that you understand what he references in here. Uh, the Jeleneth's uh, disappearance. Indeed. We're familiar. It is us. We? It is we? 
that told Towster of the disappearance of the girl. You came from Melbourne then? Yes, six days back. Six days. I haven't seen her uh, in that length of time. Uh, I've. It's been more than a week since I've, I've uh, seen her. Maybe longer? I have not seen it. If she had made her way down the river, I have eyes on the river at all times. Uh, the... Towster sometimes sends her to look for plants and herbs along Hog Brook. There are species that, that grow along there that can have uh, benefits of uh, medicinal purposes and that uh, he and, uh, and uh, Jalanath use in their, in their craft uh, as well. I will send word uh, further, but Towster says that you are willing to help. Is that right? We are. We are. We do not believe she was searching for reagents for she left her bag there and her town in the barren. Well, the... Jeleneth can be said to be many things, but um, uh, uncautious as she is not. Uh, she knows the threats that can be found in the Thornwood and in the Blessed Wood as well. Um, the trail I found was north of town. Houster mentioned you keep an eye on the dark places. I do. The north of Milbourne, that leads to uh, the Blandrite Hills and the mines. Something large I found with a scrap of her clothing. Large. So you remember it was um, just okay. bigger than her. Like it's men's, you know. Man size? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I got an impression. Yeah. It was giant size or something. No, no, no. Sorry, I was not. Yeah, that's just... Hmm. I will... It's late in the day. Uh, your kind uh, can travel freely at, at night. Alas, I, I cannot. And a torch would bring far too much attention uh, than uh, would not be worth... The attention that it would bring would not be worth the extra light. I have... I know you have traveled, uh, but I would like to check the Hog Brook to be sure. Give me an hour. I will arrange matters here. I will, I will uh, prepare provisions for all of us, uh, and I will send word to elsewhere in the Shire. Is that acceptable? Of course. Why do you believe it's the brook that we should seek? It is more a matter of practicality. Um, I have a friend who can search the... Uh, she keeps eyes on the Blanrite Hills, and she will search them faster uh, than we would be able to reach them. Uh, if Jeleneth is there, she will find her, um, or at least find uh, trackings of her. While she looks uh, out of an abundance of caution, we should check the brook. If uh, I don't doubt uh, your kind and a familiarity with the uh, the woods. I, I trust that you found what you say you found. But this is where we we need to be certain that we look under every um, under every stone. Under every bough. At the mention of uh, this woman finding things uh, Elanian shares a look with Knox. Uh, mystic knowledge sort of type thing and then uh, says very well you are the master here and we will take your advice he laughs he says hardly um, this uh, <laughs> and he gestures to that this was uh, has been in my family for generations uh, that is all uh, please um, if you see yourself to the house uh, the main house we will see you fed uh, you can rest and we will set out uh, I will bring supplies necessary 
uh, for overnighting as well too. Uh, we may spend a night or two uh, in the uh, in the Thornwood. We can talk about what to expect there. But, and he comes in again and says, thank you. Thank you for bringing this message. And thank you for offering your help as well. So, um, he's going to be gone for about an hour. If there's anything you guys want to do. Well, I'll say to Lanny and that. I remember we heard back uh, in Millborn about the, uh, I think they maybe were werewolves or something that might be in the Thornwood. Something about uh, some woman running around with a pack of wolves. I uh, wonder if this has something to do with this. And, and even if it doesn't, we should we should be prepared, it seems, to deal with uh, lycanthropes. But you know more about woods than I do, so. You're looking at the... Um, I'm looking uh, at the rumors. Yeah, yeah, the rumors, okay. Yeah, there is some information in there, too. Yeah. So I'll, I'll read it to you guys. It said, uh, somebody had told us there, there, there be one of them druids in the Thornwood. The old druid, I misremember his name. Darlin, was it? He gathered his last mistletoe a few years back, like, and now there's this funny female critter running around with a pack of wolves, they do say. Wolves, I ask you. Owls and ferrets are good enough for old Darlin. I don't know what the wor world's coming to. <laughs> Uh, there is more information as well that you know about the Thornwood too. Do you want to give that a read too? Uh, yeah. So um, okay. So the, uh, also um, uh, somebody told us, you know, don't go there. You mark my words. I can still remember the scourge, as we calls it around here, when Count Palfrey brought in all of them mercenaries to clear out the orcs. Killed more of them than my dogs killed rats they did. No sign of the varmints now, but there be darkness and evil in those woods, they do say. So there was a scourge years ago in the woods where Paul Frey hired mercenaries in the, in the lifetime of this count uh, to, um, to clear out uh, a uh, tribe of orcs. And orcs in Greyhawk are your classic D, D orcs they are um well actually this is second edition orcs as well too which are a little closer to kind of like klingon things you know where there's a, a strange kind of code of honor they're actually lawful evil uh in um a D, &D uh not chaotic uh so uh but they definitely rule by strength they will eat living sentience and then it depends on what which, which of their you know pantheon of gods uh dark gods that they follow uh they they may be more um, belligerent uh, than that. Uh, in any event, they are not uh, friendly towards, uh, for the most part, towards civilized folk. So we're definitely going to some dangerous territory. Uh, and and did you didn't see any, any, any signs in Port Tents about, about what may come to pass? Mm, give me some time to think upon it. But I do have one question, Kevin. Of course. Are these pig-faced orcs or not? <laughs> these are not. <laughs> Son of a! I know. I'm out of this. You know what? If I could find, if I could have found a really badass picture of pig, uh, pig face orcs, I would be all over it. Uh, but uh, I could not, and I can't even find. A I would. Good... I, I would love if Hobbs just like literally disappeared. Yeah, so he's like, like I'm out of here. I will tell you this, uh, Hobbs. You do have uh, trampier bugbears in the adventure, though. Nice. nice. Yeah. So. All right. I guess that'll. Modifying <laughs> <laughs> <For now. laughs> He's slowly moving the cursor away from the X at the top of the screen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, if there's anything else you guys want to do, uh, you you do get a, a full repast of, of an actual proper meal this time. So, you know, there's um, preserves, there's fresh bread, there is um uh, like a goat stew of some kind uh that that uh, has been prepared that you um uh, you get um if there is anything that i'm uh, that i would call my worst um you know skill as a dm it's describing meals because <laughs> i just don't care <laughs> i'm so fucking awful at it i really could just print off a sheet i guess with some stuff on it but or read some uh what's his name george R. R. martin <laughs> uh-huh yep uh, anyway, the you have your, your meal, uh, and then you uh, Kuiper comes in and joins you again, too. This time wearing 
more what you see in the picture there. He's got traveling clothes on, he's got some armor on, and he has a, um, a pretty fancy looking sword, a dagger on the other side of his uh, hip, or the other hip, uh, and a, uh, a bow with him as well. Uh, so he says, then, um, what uh, do you wish to... Yeah. <laughs> uh, then, uh, if you... I, I have a, a small... It's not called a skiff, but I, I can't think of what the small boat's called. Uh, a sh a shoot? Oh! <laughs> I have. Where is it? Yes, yeah, book for that. <laughs> of ships in the sea! Uh, kind of like a punt? A punt yeah. sounds right. A long, narrow, flat bottom boat. Yeah, punt. There you go. That guy is good. Yeah. Hey. Okay. okay, sounds good. Um, then he um, <laughs> he set off in his uh, his boat. Uh, and uh, let's see here. It is uh, by nightfall. You guys have just kind of reached the um, uh, the edge of Hogbrook uh, and have made uh, camp on the. Uh, on the shore, um, he in the in the course of going down too, he kind of lets you guys know what to uh, you know what to expect uh, from the Thornwood, and I think we need to have a change of score here. Let's move this down here. Interesting. So his first, uh, this is great because we got some woodland campsite music. We haven't had the score on all day when I was working on my character for hours earlier. It was that endless thing you had yeah. going. No, <laughs> nothing. There we go. Uh, and let's see here. 3D chat. That's what I want. I want this one, I think. Yep. That sounds about right. I so, like to go and check the titles of these things. Just <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what's that? What does TPK stand for? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> so you guys reach the um, uh, the edge there, and then uh, the thornwood itself seems to uh, push in on the sides. But there is like once you you get past that initial you know bend that looks like it's sort of uh, creeping in. It does look like there are respectable shores on either side that you're able to to go along uh, and Kuiper tells you that you know pig farmers often bring their um, uh, their flock or whatever or their herd what do you call a pack of pigs? I don't even know I don't know a we're all learning the last night a murder, a murder of, pigs? of pigs Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a school, a parliament a parliament of pigs <laughs> so um, uh, oh a, dr a drift, a drove, or a litter a drove. There we go. So a drove of, um, of pigs. Uh, they like, bring them in here. I like the, I like the parliament better. <laughs> the parliament of pigs. Yes. <laughs> Older pigs are called a sounder. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that's good too. I like it. How about that? Sounder like, swine. You know, word games with a side of AD&D. That's, yeah, that's exactly. what this campaign is. Uh, so you Very guys, education. Yeah, you make your way uh, down, and, and you, you hear that the you know pig farmers often bring. Uh, their droves in here to uh, to feast on tasty acorns and things like that. Um, but they're also, uh, I think, um, who no one's got any uh, like uh, herbology or, or you know proficiency with herbs at all, do they? Uh, close as I got is cooking. No, so maybe you're you're maybe can see some stuff, but you're not sure. You're you're you know what to do with it when you have it, but you don't necessarily know it to to spot it. Um, but there is a wide variety of of um, uh, of fauna that is um, flora that is growing up in, in all these different uh, uh, directions and you guys are uh, you get in about on that second day about mid morning and then he pulls the uh, the skiff aside and uh, he, everyone gets all of you guys out or the, the punt aside and gets all the rest of you out and you guys begin searching along the uh, the lake and after, I'm assuming that you guys have discussed sort of who's good at this stuff. So we'll say that like Elanian and uh, Dorman are on one side of the of the brook, and then uh, he is on the other one. And you guys are making your way down. And 
Uh, it's when he's back on your... Actually, here, why don't we do this? Uh, Alenian and Dorman, why don't you each give me a um, a check for tracking, please? Absolutely. I think you both are trained in that. Nice. Not even... Wow. Being low to the ground, I can see it all. Yeah, yeah. So, um, both of you guys, you um, you reach a point when you're, you're sort of walking along and you can picture the, the brook is almost... Uh, it's, it's almost like there's a gable of natural trees that are growing all the, almost all the way across. So light is is sort of able to get through in the middle of the of the brook, but otherwise you're you're you know dappled in shadows and shafts of light that cut through the uh, uh, ever uh, increasingly thick uh, foliage above you. And I think it's um, Dorman who cat spots this first, but you see there's a big print in the um, uh, in the ground. And uh, it's some kind of mammal. And so you kind of stop, and, and having spoken to Alanian, you're uh, well familiar with, uh, uh, you're aware that Alanian has an a impressive knowledge of, uh, of animals. Uh, so you don't need to make a roll for this, Hobbs, but you look at this, and this is a wolf's print. It doesn't seem unusual, right? Doesn't seem unusual, but um, wolves in these forests, if if it's a fresh enough print here, it means that they are nearby, uh, and they most often travel in packs, uh, and a lone girl traveling along, though she may be a um, capable wizard, that, that might be a concern. Uh, although, you found no tracks of hers yet. So, you, um, uh, Kuiper, sort of has, has you know, um, found a place to kind of forward across and he runs up to see where you guys are, are looking at this and he says, did you find something? Indeed. Of course. He Wolves. He, he gets a kind of an arc of, on a, you know, one of his eyes kind of, or eyebrows kind of goes up and he says, really? And he walks over, looks at this and he gets a look, it's almost like a look of, um, uh, uh, like a, a, a wry kind of smile. And he turns and he says, just wait. It's a sign. Wait here. Make no make no hostile gestures. And he walks to the edge of the woods and he's just kind of looking around, studying the trees. Each of you guys can give me a wisdom uh, check if you like. Y'all are going to get some penalties here, but uh, like that. what's your uh, what's your wisdom score? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. So you can't roll. Uh, you, have to, you just have to roll a dice. Unfortunately, you don't have uh, George and Hobbs. You, you don't have uh, an ability to just make a uh, stat check on, uh, on this. Oof. Uh, nice. Okay. I rolled my score. Okay. So once again, I think it's a penalty. So. Okay, so I think it's it's uh, Dorman. You can actually see there's something, something's kind of moving in one, you know, one part of the thick um, bushes and and you know along the trees, and you see something uh, poke out of it, and uh, it's probably about maybe like uh, up, maybe a hundred yards away, uh, down maybe seventy five yards away, but uh, what you see is. Where is it here? Where's my fang dragon? I mean, where's my friendly fang dragon? Dorman's fingers itching to knock an arrow, but he said she told us not to make any hostile movements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what you see poke her head out is this, guys. Another human. There's not the big dragon or whatever behind there, um, but it is a filthy and wild-looking uh, young human woman. Looking for a date. And you can see then what pokes. She sort of crouched uh, very much like what's in the illustration, and uh, Kuiper kind of puts his hand up towards her, and he says something in a language that it sounds unlike anything you guys have have heard, uh, and. She looks, and then you see first one massive wolf head kind of pokes its head out next to her, and then a second one. 
and she kind of puts her hands up idly and, and kind of scratches the, the the chin of these dogs, which are wolves, which are much bigger than her. And uh, she says something back in that same tongue, so Kuiper walks over to her. He looks back at you guys and just kind of puts his hand up like, wait, just, just wait. So he walks up, and what... Um, they have a, a, a brief conversation. Uh, what are you guys doing during this this time? I'm probably keeping my uh, my little henchman Cobalt the dog from uh, freaking out too much. Okay. Uh, talking with, I was going to say, Lanian was talking with Knox, mentioning, wondering if this is a ward or daughter or some relation to Darlin the Druid that was yeah. said to be here. Mm. That's our best guess. Yeah, the um, yeah, I don't know. You, I mean, you could ask Kuiper about that. So you're all waiting there, and then he seems to have finished talking, you know, and he walks back to you guys, and uh, he says, um, "She's a friend. Don't trouble yourself. Um, her name is Oleana." I'll edit the uh, the name here. She is a watcher in these woods. Um, she and her and her friends. Uh, I asked about um, Jelaneth, and I hoped that we might find uh, Oleana in here. She's seen no sign of her. Uh, forgive me the the ruse. Um, I Oleana can be difficult uh, to contact if. Uh, if one does not go looking in her domain for her. Uh, while Oleana has said that no one, that she has not seen uh, Jelaneth, there is a problem. Uh, there is a young boy from um, a farm not far from mine whose name is Crinan. And it seems that uh, Oleana has seen Crinan and he has been afflicted with the moon curse. And I think you guys, uh, let's hear the, why doesn't everyone just give me a, an uh, intelligence check? Go ahead and roll d d20. If you roll your intelligence or less, you know what lycanthropy is, otherwise you don't. Oh yeah, I know what it is. Yeah. Yep. I know what it is. <laughs> Yeah, pick me! <laughs> pick me! Pick me! <laughs> Put your hand down, son. All right, so y'all are, are familiar with lycanthropy. Uh, so it seems that this boy has been afflicted with the moon curse and has gone one wandering off into the woods. How now, long ago was he afflicted? Uh, this was a seeming of like a day ago. When's the next full moon? Uh, the full moon um, is uh, is not for uh, a couple of days, but no. there are different varieties of the moon curse. Some uh, afflict only in, in their subject to the cycles of the moon. Some are otherwise. And this boy, Oleana, seems to think is has been afflicted with one of the less uh, less aggressive strains. He has been cursed with the spirit of a bear. I know the family, and I know Crinan. Uh, if he has come by this by blood rather than by bite, it's something that can be managed. I... I know Maxim, uh, his father, would want me to at least try and... try and save him uh, before something finds him or before he loses himself uh, to this curse. I have supplies in here to secure uh, something like him and this early and as young as he is uh, he should be he should be something we can secure but I will need help 
I know that you are looking for Jeleneth, but I have a friend looking for her. Oleana says she is not here. Two days spared will not, uh, will, should not affect Jeleneth's fate, but it could save this boy's life. Uh, well, we most we'll, certainly will assist. Yeah, we're here right now. Yeah, okay. might as well. Oleana says she had, or indicated she has found his trail, uh, and it leads deeper into the Thornwood. Uh, she can lead us, though even I have trouble keeping pace with her, so we, the trip may be, um, may I sold may be uh, arduous. And he kind of looks at, at to you, um, uh, Elanian, and then looks at you, Baragor, and says, well, f for some. And, yeah. Um, Oleana, the, while this is going on, she and the wolves are just kind of, like, hunched over on the side of the uh, the river or the brook, just watching you guys. When uh, Kuiper turns around, he says something back to her. And, uh, Elanian, I think because you grew up around this, you maybe have heard they might be communicating in the secret language known only to the druids. Cool. That may be why it sounds so unfamiliar. The sounds that they're making in, in uh, communicating are so unfamiliar to all of your ears. Um, so, uh, if you guys are willing to go along then, then we are heading deeper into the Thornwood. Yeah, So. Do it. Bring it on. What we uh, do, guys, then, is uh, Oleana does um, lead the way uh, towards where she saw... Uh, so I'm going to write down this kid's name because I'm going to forget it. Crinan. Crinan, thank got you. Not in our party notes. Oh, yeah, sorry. I, I keep getting out of the oh, habit. Nice job. I may not have spelled it right, but... Nope, I didn't spell it right. No, yeah. <laughs> I, was... me, me, I, I didn't either. <laughs> Carl Sargent is a fully committed to his fantasy names because they are all over the place. Like, <laughs> <laughs> or was, I should say. All right, so um, Oleana doesn't really make a lot of um, small talk. Uh, she's only about... Like, when, when you actually get a sense of... Get a chance to actually see her up close, standing upright, she's probably only 5'5". Five, five. So she's not a, a particularly large um, woman, but she is um, quite strong. Uh, and her body is covered with uh, like the, the kind of uh, small scars that you would expect from, from uh, such a harsh you know, uh, life. Um, if you think to ask, I know uh, Alanian and Nox, you, you were kind of uh, uh, wondering about the, you know, what, what um, uh, where she came from? Yeah. Well, we were thinking that she was the ward of uh, Darlin, the druid. Yeah, and that's what um, what Kuiper tells you is that you know she. Uh, this is when you're taking one of your you know uh, your lunch breaks or something like that, just to, to kind of catch your breath. Bergor is uh, um, you've got running, so he's able to make some pretty good you know um, uh, some pretty good distance. But Bergor, this is it's it's a strain even on your dwarven constitution. Although your constitution's incredible, isn't it? My yeah. constitution is 18. Yeah, yeah. And I have running nice. and endurance as proficiency. Nice. Okay, so yeah. I've, so you're I've also awesome. got endurance. So yeah, yeah. I may not be fast, mm. but I keep it up. Cool. <laughs> All right. So then you guys are making good time through there as well, too. What, what Kuiper tells you is that uh, they didn't know. You know, like we, he, he, was, he knew the old druid, um, but he didn't know that the druid took a, a, a mentor or took a, uh, an acolyte. And it wasn't until uh, you know Kuiper was was in the Thornwood and he came across her. Uh, she seems to have spent years on her own uh, in there too. So it's made her uh, quite feral. Uh, to be so it, is is Darlin dead? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, he died, and uh, she's now the only druid who watches over these woods. I see. Okay. When you say she's feral, would animal handling be a benefit? Uh, animal handling would tell you how to uh, communicate with her to wolves, um, which you learn are named. Uh, where is it here? I'm remembering now why my old modules were all full of highlighting and stuff like that, and underlining. <laughs> this is before they bolded stuff that you needed to re reference quite often. Um, yeah. Belshar and Arlen. <laughs> 
That's not really high end. Those are the wolves' names. Yeah, and if you've got, um, if you ingratiate yourselves to them, then she's a little more, uh, probably uh, Alanian and Dorman. She's, uh, she's not actively trying to avoid you two, uh, but not quite ready to engage uh, with you fully uh, just yet. Uh, so she seems to be um, definitely keeping as as good of a uh, keeping pace that you guys are um, yourselves and Kuiper are still there's times when she just disappears into the brambles and is gone way ahead of you and Kuiper just kind of carries on in the direction that y y you seem to be going and then she'll suddenly appear again with um, uh, Belshar and Arlen um, she uh, it is the uh, second so what what also you have an opportunity to talk about is the strategy for for uh, taking um, uh, Krinin down so assuming that he has lost himself to uh, to his um, his bare form, uh, what he has, Kuiper has these two really strong weighted nets, and what he needs is he will distract the bear. It is critical that no one attack the bear. Um, if it's driven to frenzy, we may not be able to. First, it's incredibly dangerous, uh, and it may not be to be brought down. He will get it to focus its attacks on him what he needs is two of you to toss these nets on him to secure him once he's secured he thinks that he and Oleana can calm him down gotcha well I'm small so I don't think I can help yeah. with that Okay. I'm, um, pretty, I'm pretty good with a rope mechanically what you're going to want is uh, it's an attack that has um, what do you call it that has uh, uh, dexterity uh, as the modifier so if anyone who's who, uh, or because it's a range attack, anyone who's got a, a decent dex, uh, you're a good candidate for this. I was just thinking, because like with the lasso, it's a big weapon and the gnomes can't use it. Yeah, you're not, this is going to be too big for you to use, Dorman. I, I can, now that I know what we're going to do, I can sing an inspiring song beforehand and uh, prime everybody up. You need, what is it, you need like a minute to do it, right? I think oh. I need a few minutes to do it. I think, yeah, I think it's like three minutes or something. You know what I'm gonna say? So here, here's the thing. Um, with the, uh, it doesn't say rounds in it, but it says minutes. Uh, we're not using. Oh yeah, Hobbs. Uh, maybe you know us already, but we're using um, the ash uh, length of time for for rounds. Rounds are ten seconds, not a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wonder whether, uh, if it's three minutes uh, in the rules as written, I imagine what they mean is three rounds. So I'll let you yeah. do just three rounds, uh, Steve. To warm up later. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, I mean, like, yeah. If we're already engaged, I think it's too late because it's sort of. I think it's before the encounters. Well, that's uh, what I'm saying. If it's before yeah. the encounter, then you. Um, where is it here? Uh, so you need to spend. Mm. You must spend three full rounds singing. So it's only. It's th yeah. You need to spend three rounds singing before they start getting the benefit. Okay. This is really, you know, it's that, like, the scene at the, the final battle in uh, 13th Warrior, where they're all talking, the, you know, saying this, the poem to each other as the things charge in. It's you spending three rounds getting everyone jazzed up, and then everyone crashes into combat. Exactly. I think, it's more I think of a what, what, I'll, what I'll do to help is uh, I'm going to cast my cantrip spell and kind of make the uh, aroma of, uh, of uh, honey or something that I think is going to kind of keep it, you know, distracted. Nice. Yeah, not, not <laughs> you, you think Krennan is Pooh Bear or Yogi? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, so, so before I said anything, I literally looked up the legitimacy of bears liking honey and it's... <laughs> <laughs> if you are trying to appeal to my uh, hometown um, uh, nostalgia, uh, you're working because uh, Winnie's named after Winnipeg. <laughs> So, oh, is that right? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What? I didn't know that. We knew the All pick because right, cool. uh, he was—it was a Canadian regiment, and uh, the guy was uh, who named it was uh, from uh, Winnipeg, or or something <laughs> like that. There's awesome. some connection to Winnipeg. Uh, that Unbelievable. Win Winnie, Winni yeah, he's named after Winnipeg. That was unexpected. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then, guys, um, you are uh, able to. Um, 
uh, yeah, you, you, you've got a plan to get to buy. Uh, uh, Knox is going to make a honey smell. Uh, Elaine is going to make a picnic basket smell. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you guys, um, yeah. So let me do one thing here. Oh, you know, I forgot to do. I forgot to do something here. Go over here. Yes, 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 yes. So I think get a, a good bonus of plus one to morale or whatever it is because of the song. Um, let me look it up again. Yeah, it's. A, I think it's a morale bonus to like yeah. th this edition doesn't really uh, type uh, the uh, bonuses you get, um, but uh, I think it is a uh, plus. It's like plus one to damage and plus one to or plus one to attacks, plus one to saving throws. I think. I don't know. That it's sounds in, right. Yeah, it's in the bard uh, thing. In any event, let me. Let's quickly do something here. Okay. Um, Lanian. Boom. Okay. I should have made um, tokens at the outset. I forgot to. Bush League DM. There we go. Here we go. Uh. Oh, it's a plus one bonus to attack rolls, or a plus one bonus to saving throws, or a plus two bonus to morale. Interesting, okay. Yeah, so you pick one. Attack bonus. Okay, there we go. And now for Nox the Unexpected. Yes. Let's see here. You can tell when it starts to chug a little bit, it's roll 20 getting pissed off at me. Hey, hey! <laughs> slow down. Slow down, mister. Quit running. Alright, here we go. Here we go. I'm having a blast, but how long does this game usually go? Oh, we're uh, wrapping up in about 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So it does. It's a four-hour game on Fridays. Four-hour game on yeah. Fridays. Yeah. Two hours on uh, uh, Wednesdays. Yep. Holy shit, mm. <laughs> We are uh, maniacs, and you are old. <laughs> You're also an hour earlier than all of us, too. Maybe two. So that is understandable. Okay. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. We got everybody here. Uh, Chael is uh, guarding the horses. They're watching the boat, guys. Nice. A long way from us. Preparing the punt. Well, I gotta... Yeah, we always need to make sure somebody doesn't show up so they can be watching horses, boats, or whatever he else needs to be watching. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we left them with the right? What the fuck is going on here? Yeah. Jeepers. What in the hell? Wow. Roll 20 is... Hold on, guys. I gotta re reload. Roll 20 is fucking up right now. Mm. It was not happy. And, of course, it's as I'm trying to <laughs> get something done before we we finish our <laughs> session. Oh, you're not gonna leave us in a cliffhanger? Um, I... I that, that would be out of character. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's see here. This thing's loading up slowly here. Hobbs, I just noticed your toque. I love your toque. What's a toque? Um, it's yeah, your it's woolen hat. Cap, yeah. But, I, I, and Hobbs, I was in your, the same boat as you two years ago when somebody said that to me the first time. So, <laughs> I was in Canada. I was like, <laughs> well, I'd say, when I discovered a couple weeks ago that you guys are on a boxing day, <laughs> it's crazy talk. <laughs> it was, I was talking mean, about, well, we're not going to have gaming on that day. It's Boxing Day, and I get this kind of like blink, blink, blink. The hat blink. I'm right now, or the hat? The, the hat you're wearing in your uh, photo, or your... Or your um... Oh, the old D&D &D hat? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's classic. That's, That's what we call a toque, eh? It's a toque, hoser. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Maximum Canadian. <laughs> Okay. Put you guys in here. Boom. Look at that. Okay. Okay. 
Now, oh gosh, I gotta make sure everyone's had uh, sight. Hmm. Come on, open up. Motherfucker. I wonder if the grease spell would be considered an attack. You know what? I, fuck it. I'll do the dynamic lighting in between, and we'll end on a cliffhanger here. Nice. Cool. Let's see here. What do you guys think? Should I grease the ground the bear is under so that he falls into the net and can't get up? That'd be pretty cool. interesting. Sounds gnomish. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay. And... Steve, you missed all my best Canadian joke material. <laughs> oh man. I'll watch you later. Yeah. <laughs> okay, where is he? Where is he? Um, there he is. Okay. So I'll move you guys over here and show you where, where we're hanging out. Boom. Camping. And I got you right here. This looks familiar. Kuiper. Um, actually, I don't think I've used these ones before. These I ones. may have come across the towel set online. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, it's... it's um, What's his name? Gabriel Picard. These are the ones I use all the time. Yeah, I love them. His stuff's <laughs> awesome. Not only because it's it looks really fucking cool, it's also because he uh, has uh, open license with it. He's said anyone can use oh. him for streaming. That's cool. Yep. Very cool awesome. guy. Uh, Hobbs, you know him too, don't you? Have you met him at least? No, I've never met Gabriel Picard. Mm. No, but I use I've spent a ton of money on Gabriel Picard. Yeah, things. me too. <laughs> it's really great stuff. Like, like I watch you on the YouTube looking at your group, and I'm like, you have about half of what I have. Maybe a. <laughs> 30% I have probably I have a lot <laughs> love Gabriel Picard yeah it's great yeah. stuff uh, okay so what you guys see is uh, and I, I don't have uh, tokens for um, ba -ba 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 Kuiper Belchar and Arlen just yet but what happens guys this is uh, in the evening though let me see who's keeping watch here we got one two three four five guys Let's roll. Uh, someone give me a D5 roll, please. There you go. Okay, so Bergor, uh, you're on watch here. You're resting on your, you know, uh, the your big axe on your, uh, across your uh, knees. You're sitting, the fire is just kind of like um, burning down. And what you see is that um, this is uh, you know not far off bless you uh, not far off from dawn as well bless you again and you hear um, Belshar uh, one of the wolves kind of like his eyes snap open those yellow eyes turns sniffs and then begins a low growl something approaches. Baragor, what do you do? You have basically one round here. Um, I'm gonna, kind of whoever's nearest to me, I'm gonna kick him awake. Let's we'll say it's Kaldor. Kaldor, yeah. So I'm gonna kick Kaldor awake. So he is, because he's an elf, um, they don't sleep. Or they're in, he's in reverie, yeah. Yeah. So you, you kind of hit him and he blinks, brings himself out of memory and looks up at you. What? What is it? Mm -hmm gesture first to the wolf and then to the direction that the noise is coming from. Okay. You guys don't see it, but the in the film version of our campaign, we hear the tense sound of a bow string straining. And that's where we will leave things. <laughs> Until Wednesday. Nice. So, guys, let's talk about uh, XP. Uh, did anyone use any spells or... I don't think anyone used any skills, like thief's abilities. Uh, nope, mostly spells. just gold. Which then? Mostly just the uh, gold that we got. So. Yeah. Uh, who used cantrip? 
That was. Or was that a joke? That was a oh, the honey sound, right? <laughs> that I was. Right. Yeah, that's that didn't come up yet. <laughs> uh, okay. Sing, singing songs. Does that mean anything? Um, no. you sang songs. I mean, that, that's worth a role playing bonus. I think. Yeah. All uh, right. So, Steve, I'll give you. Uh, let's see. I think I'll give you a twenty XP for that. Well, thank you. Okay, so that's you personally for that. Um, you guys, I will give you. Um, mm, 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 mm. Hold on, hear me. Okay, for that, and I'll give you. Yeah. All right, so guys, uh, everyone can go ahead and take a fifty-point um, individual XP bonus, and if you've got a prime requisite that gives you a bonus, that'll be fifty-five. Uh, and then you'll gain uh, each another 55 from uh, today's session. So it's 110 XP you're getting for today, guys, in uh, including your XP bonus. Nine. Uh, divided by two for us multi-class characters. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. All right. So I'm then... A, I'm about a fourth of the way to level two for a thief. Hell yes. Yeah, the level... Nice. You know, and once you guys start getting into scraps, you're going to see that go up, I think, a little bit. Or once you start finding some stuff, I guess, it's going to start going up faster. So, pretty cool. I right. got a pretty sizable bonus for the gold that we spread out, so... Mm hmm Then, um, okay. The... Let's see here. Guys, um, let me kill this. Or I'll just turn down the music, and then we'll do the, uh, the outro. And I'll kill this campfire sound. All right, so uh, for those listening at home, uh, those who join us in chat, to those who join later, thanks so much for joining us, guys. Um, this, I hope you enjoyed uh, session two of our Greyhawk Night Below uh, campaign. I think I'm going to rename it to be Greyhawk Night Below so that we can distinguish it from just running Night Below uh, altogether. Um, as always, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, uh, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below, and I will endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. Uh, alternatively, you can... Uh, reach me by Twitter. Uh, on uh, My Twitter handle is Dungeon Musings. Uh, you can also email me. My email address is dungeonmusings at uh, gmail.com. Uh, you can also um, j follow a link in the description of the video to something called Hero... No, to uh, the Dungeon Musings Discord, uh, where we have channels dedicated to all the campaigns we've run on the channel, including this one. Um, we have a Find a Group channel as well, too, if you're looking to find a game to get into. Um, there's uh, groups or channels that are uh, discussions of uh, the various games that we run on here, as well as other games. Um, and there is a pretty badass uh, Mutants and Masterminds play-by-post uh, that is uh, currently ongoing that is making me want to run um, Hero quite badly. <laughs> so I see champions getting closer and closer to my future. Not because you're not running a great game of Mutants and Masterminds, just because that is my particular flavor of uh, superhero RPG. Um, yeah, in addition, you can find pretty much all of us on there as well, too. So if you want to reach us uh, individually or in group, uh, you can find us on the Dungeon Musings Discord. Um, in addition, there is a link in the description of the video to something called Heroes Save Villages. That is the charity fundraising campaign that we run on the channel. Uh, we don't monetize the channel in any other way. We don't run ads. Uh, if you are inclined to toss any money in the direction of the channel, uh, GP or otherwise, uh, you can follow the link there and learn all about the Heroes Save Villages campaign, which benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity. Um, in addition, between from now until noon of January 1st, 2020, you can um, make donations to get raffle tickets for our current raffle. The grand prize for our raffle is a brand new copy of Beetle and Grimm's Platinum Edition Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. This product, brand new, is a $500 US product that Beetle and Grimm have very generously donated for us to raffle off. It has the full Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus adventure, as well as a bunch of extra content, uh, monster cards, a DM screen, maps, miniatures, including this massive infernal machine, um, including a stuffed flump and soul coins and a whole bunch of other cool shit to make running that campaign all the cooler and the more tactile. Um, and to win that thing, all you need to do is get one or more raffle tickets, which are $25 Canadian each, which works out to about 18 bucks American. Every ticket gives you one chance to win. And if you don't win the grand prize, you still have a chance to win one of the other prizes, which include a copy of the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Core Rulebook, which I donated, a, a copy of the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Beast Cherry, which I also donated, and a copy of the Starfinder Character Operations Manual, which also I donated. Um, 
Even better, because Beetle and Grimm were so generous as to donate it, I will cover the shipping cost. So if you win the um, Platinum Edition Baldur's Gate box set, I will pay to have it shipped to you. Uh, and if you want to see, there is a link on, there is a uh, video on the channel that uh, has the, I hold it up, but this thing comes in a box that's about three feet by one and a half feet. It is fucking huge. Much bigger than what the Dragon Heist box set was. So it's very, very cool. And best of all, any donations go to help SOS Children's Villages do the very good work they do, which is to say to help over 80,000 orphan and abandoned children from around the world. They're active in over 130 different countries, and you can learn all about their activities and have an opportunity to enter for the draw by following the link below. Last but not least, I want to thank my players. Guys, session two under our belt. So, John, Arlen, Hobbs, George, and Steve, thank you so much for joining me on Friday night back in Herringshire. I hope you guys survive the next session. Yeah, me too. Thanks, too. Yeah. <laughs> Great. All right, guys. So then, until, for those listening at home, until next time, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we hope to see you again on Wednesday. And until then, happy gaming. <laughs>